What's up guys? It's your boy Omni Sensei back with the new Naruto What If series. Reborn in Naruto. Evil MC possess suppressed Naruto's dark side. Part 6. If you enjoy my content, consider subscribing to the channel. Like the video, share, and leave a comment. This really helps with the algorithm. Remember to check out the author of this fantastic fanfic. Link in the description. Also, I have set up a Patreon account, consider joining to support the channel, and for more exclusive content. With all that out of the way, let's get into it. If the story had followed the original plot, he, as a hidden antagonist, should have been touched by a mysterious force, and later reconciled with Naruto. They would then work together, becoming Naruto's golden finger for improvement, or he could have served as a stepping stone for Naruto's growth, ultimately dying at the hands of some powerful enemy. But, unfortunately, he wasn't part of the original plot. He was an otherworldly demon from Earth. With this thought in mind, Keizu's calm expression took on a playful air as he gazed intently at Naruto. He said, if you feel so guilty and think you can't do anything right, why not entrust your body to me? I'll become the dominant personality that shields and protects you, will you become my supporting secondary personality? I'll take good care of your friends on the outside. I won't let them be hurt like they were today, all because of your rampage. I can even become the hookage and fulfill your dream of becoming a recognized presence by everyone. This way, you won't have to work too hard, and you can easily achieve all your goals without too much effort. Keizu's voice was like a devil's whisper, causing Naruto's facial expressions to continuously change. Naruto pondered for a moment, and even though he felt there was something off, he eventually nodded resolutely. Alright. Just like my brother who shields me from the wind and rain, Keizu, I'll entrust my body to you from now on. But when I have free time, you have to let me come out and get some fresh air. And when we eat it at Chiraka Raymond, you have to let me out too. He actually agreed. Keizu frowned and felt that Naruto had become more challenging to handle. In the past, Naruto would have resisted and then emotionally demanded that Keizu relinquish control. Now, he seemed like stubborn pork, not afraid of boiling water. What on earth was going on? With these thoughts in mind, Keizu focused his attention on the system panel in his mind. As ex he glanced at Naruto, who appeared somewhat lost. Keizu's playful expression suddenly disappeared, replaced by a gentle smile. It was as though an older brother was dealing with his mischievous younger sibling. You, you silly kid. I was just joking with you earlier. Even if I become the dominant personality, it will be when you no longer want to be in control, not like now. Moreover, what you did just now was not wrong. As you said, it's natural for a foolish little brother to rely on a strong big brother. There's nothing wrong with that. All those things I said earlier were meant to help you grow, and to make you understand some things. At this point, Keizu's expression became serious and solemn. Because I've been bearing the darkness and pain you've experienced all along, it has shrouded me and kept me vigilant. That's why I spare no effort in eliminating any potential threats. This is not only helping you but also helping myself and adding a protective layer to this body. We need both the compassionate heart and thunderous methods. Your kindness and gentleness alone won't work, so I have to be ruthless, cruel, and reveal my fierce claws. Only this way can others dare not bully us as orphans, fear us, and even respect us. Take root, who no longer dares to harm us, the Anbu who respect us, and even the villagers who aren't allowed to speak casually now, for example. Listening to Keizu's explanation, Naruto suddenly felt a sense of enlightenment. Is it always like this? Naruto thought. He felt that Keizu's heartfelt words made a lot of sense. However, there was an indescribable force that made him reluctant to accept the idea of using extreme measures. But thinking about all the pain Keizu had endured over the years and the protection he had provided, Naruto temporarily pushed aside those doubts brought by his teary eyes. As he gazed at Keizu, who was his age but radiated seriousness and the need to be strong and ruthless, Naruto stood up and wanted to hug him. However, in midair, he hesitated, fearing rejection. Keizu noticed Naruto's hesitation, and his expression softened into a gentle smile, one that said, you understand, right? I spoil you. He gently patted Naruto's head. Naruto stopped hesitating and threw himself into Keizu's arms, crying loudly. I'm sorry, really sorry, I misunderstood you before, sob, sob, sob. As Naruto cried, the system message arrived as expected. Darkening value plus 5000 current darkening value. 
16,000 main personality trust and reliance value. 72, cannot drop below 60. It turned out that Naruto had only verbally agreed before, but his heart had not truly accepted it. Now, as he followed his inner feelings and expressed his hopes, the effect was immediate. With the recent acquisition of the Nine Tails power and the battle against Rachimer, the darkening value had increased by 5,000. While the trust and reliance value had only increased by 5, the non-droppable value had increased by 10. It was clear that as it approached 80, the rate of increase would become smaller and more challenging. Kays had a premonition that breaking through the 80 threshold, whether changing the main personality to secondary or vice versa, would be a formidable obstacle. It would require even more intense and direct emotional impact. While Kays was accompanying Naruto in their deep brotherly moment, Nine Tails, who had remained silent the entire time, couldn't hold back any longer. With a chuckle, he finally burst into laughter. Oh, I can't help it anymore, ha ha ha. Nine Tails laughed like an old dog, lying on the ground in the sealed space, legs in the air. If it were a touching scene of harmonious brotherhood, he would naturally pretend to be invisible. But with Kay's appearing to have ill intentions, and Naruto being genuinely moved and shedding tears, it was just too funny for Nine Tails to bear. He adjusted his choice of words slightly and playfully teased Kay's, which made him completely believe in the plan. In truth, Nine Tails was starting to regret why he hadn't contacted Naruto earlier, and tricked him into releasing him. Is it that funny? Kaze's calm voice echoed. I remember that dogs like to eat poop, so for a fox, a member of the canine family, it shouldn't be a problem, right? I just happened to build a new septic tank for the Four Star Village, which is perfect for letting your Chakra Link Shadow clones taste it. Cough, 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 Nine Tails' laughter abruptly stopped, replaced by a fit of coughing. Then he opened his bloody mouth and roared with anger. You brat, just because you're good looking and powerful doesn't mean you can do whatever you want. Are you allowed to reconcile and not let me applaud your relationship? HMPH, I don't just want to laugh while lying down, I also want to kneel down and laugh. Defiant and unwilling, Nine Tails, in that very moment, presented Case with the spectacle of a fox kneeling down while clutching its hooves. Hokage's office. Sasuke obtained Tailed Beast Chakra and defeated Arachimaru Case, can actually use the eight inner gates, and even open the fourth gate. The face of Saratobi hears and turned pale as he stared at the images in the crystal bowl. His mind was filled with doubt, fear, and a touch of regret. As a master of ninjutsu, even if he didn't hear what everyone was saying, he could easily identify the ninjutsu in the images based on his vision and experience. But what he completely didn't expect was that Case could actually use the eight inner gates. Could it be that the forbidden scroll that was stolen that time contained the knowledge of this technique? Although it had been three months since then, he distinctly remembered that the forbidden scroll he prepared for Naruto contained four ninjutsu and no tojutsu. Even if he was mistaken and the scroll did indeed contain the eight inner gates, achieving the fourth gate in just three months was beyond the scope of talent, and should be labeled as a monster, a freak, or inhuman. Or perhaps, Keiza's persona had already existed since Naruto's childhood. He could emerge at any time without Naruto's knowledge. He had been hiding all along, practicing various ninjutsu, and mastering the Nine Tails Chakra. After all, he didn't always use the telescope technique to observe Naruto. The Anbu surveillance was mainly for protection, and there could have been some oversights and lapses in monitoring. All this time could have been used for training. And since Mike Guy usually practiced jutsu throughout the village, it was easy to learn. This could explain how Kaze displayed such incredible tojutsu, Nine Tails Chakra, and the Eight Inner Gates. The more Saratobi hears and thought about it, the more reasonable it seemed. Although he couldn't understand why Naruto, who shared the same body, had such poor tojutsu skills. But this was the most reasonable explanation he could come up with. If only I hadn't been so greedy three months ago. I should have immediately sent Yamashiro Aoi with the sealing team to work on sealing Naruto. Now he has completely gained Naruto's trust and established himself firmly. Regretful and frustrated, Saratobi hears and wished he could give Danzo a few slaps in the face. If it weren't for him insisting on bringing Naruto to the main office with an indifferent attitude, he wouldn't have acted the same way, leading to the current situation. Now, even if he wanted to seal case, Naruto probably wouldn't cooperate. Danzo, hiding in a certain base, sneezed and felt an inexplicable heaviness on his back. We can only take it step by step. If it came to it, Saratobi hears and could only try to persuade Naruto through deceit. 
or find a way to make Kay's go on a rampage in the village to force Naruto to agree to sealing. Of course, if Kay's could become more restrained and obedient in the future, he wouldn't have to go to this extent. After thinking about this matter, Saratobi hears and looked at Sasuke, and a barely noticeable trace of greed appeared in his eyes. If he could obtain this tailed beast chakra, he wouldn't have to worry about Orochimaru, and his body might even return. Sighing and shaking his head, Saratobi hears and put away his greed, tapped the desk, and began pondering. Just who gave Sasuke this tailed beast chakra, and what's the underlying principle? Other than the legendary Jinchuriki like Naruto, he had never heard of anyone else being able to use Tailed Beast Chakra. Just as Saratobi hears and was lost in thought while staring at the crystal ball, Yamato, who had just come out of the forest of death, entered the room respectfully. Hokage-sama. Saratobi hears and nodded and noticed the remains of Arachimaru brought by Yamato. Ah, I never expected that he would ultimately use those experiments to turn himself into something neither human nor ghost. After expressing his thoughts, Saratobi hears and leaned forward and said, We don't need to talk about Naruto's information. Tell me about Sasuke and that tailed beast chakra. Yes, facing Saratobi hears and inquiry, Yamato quickly recounted the information he had learned after questioning Sakura. A shinobi from the Four Star Village, given by a mysterious masked figure. Saratobi hears and furrowed his brows and reached for a file about the Four Star Village from a drawer. They joined the alliance with the Fire Country, using high-yield rice seeds as an entry token, and sent someone to participate in the exams. They also recruited several less rank criminals, using the rice seeds as leverage to offer them protection. Now, numerous bounty hunters, a large Miss Village pursuit force, elite scouts from various villages have disappeared in the Four Star Village, and there's a suspicion of the presence of Jonin level strong individuals and a cage level individual a newly established shinobi village with such depth. This is troublesome. The suspected cage level strength of the four star village could secure a position in the ninja world. Additionally, with high yield rice seeds as their trump card, the fire country's daimyo wouldn't dare to threaten the destruction of the wave country. It was highly likely that Kanoha would have to solve this issue by themselves. But now, the confirmed presence of cage level strength was a significant concern. It was certainly a powerful Jinchuriki who had gone rogue and possessed the ability to share Tailed Beast Chakra with others. Given the capabilities of his current subordinates, they wouldn't stand a chance against such an opponent. The good news was that the Four Star Village hadn't shown any malicious intent, and their target seemed to be Sasuke. Furthermore, among the candidates who arrived were a member of the Yuki clan, and one from the Yuzumaki clan. Their purpose was likely related to collecting Kekei Genkai. Saratobi hears and quickly pieced together relevant information from the limited data. In that case, Saratobi hears and raised his head and looked at Yamato. Relay the information about what happened to Sasuke to Danzo and have him pass this information to the relevant parties. For now, he couldn't provoke them directly. However, he could send Itachi, who had been undercover, to investigate and gather more information. After all, Danzo had used the threat of wiping out his family, and under pressure, Itachi had sacrificed his clan to protect Sasuke's life. Although there hadn't been any reports from undercover Itachi so far, Saratobi hears and believed that Danzo had a way to transmit messages. With Itachi's abilities, they could stir things up in the Four Star Village. He could also send spies during the chaos. I understand, Yamato nodded and didn't inquire further. He then swiftly disappeared from the location. At the resting place in the Sound Village, Arachimaru, in his half-snake form, emerged from the earth. Lord Arachimaru. What's happened to you? The four cursed seal bearers who were resting there disguised as ordinary shinobi, surrounded him when they saw Arachimaru in this state. I'm fine, Arachimaru finally breathed a sigh of relief upon seeing his subordinates. Using the last of his chakra, he dispelled the white snake true form. A lower half of his body, which was a snake, slipped out from his gaping mouth. He then instructed the four bears. Kitameru, inform the sand village of our plan's acceleration, and tell them that if Gara doesn't arrive before the end of the second stage of the exams, the plan will be deemed a failure. Teaya, go back to the hidden sound village and bring Jirobo here. Seiken, keep an eye on the sand village. As soon as they set out, bring back the news. Kimimuro, infiltrate the exam arena and relay the message to Dosu. While Orochimaru's primary goal, seducing Sasuke, hadn't been entirely successful, he didn't want to allow Naruto and Sasuke's power to surpass his expectations. 
To thwart the second objective, the collapse of Kanoha, Arachimaru had to take a risk and advance his plans during the two candidates' exams. Forest of Death. Sitting on a stone, Kay still had his eyes tightly closed, his consciousness immersed in the sealed space. Next to him, Sasuke was also sitting with closed eyes, deep in thought. As for the two teams receiving Sakura's treatment, they were all curiously observing Kay's. Based on Ino's embellishment of Naruto's exploits, along with Sakura's additions, they now had a basic understanding of what kind of person Kay's was. In summary, he was more powerful than the teachers, kind to his own, but extremely cruel and violent towards enemies. It could be said that any ninja who provoked Naruto and caused Kays to emerge, except for the legendary San and Jiraiya, ended up severely injured or dead. The graves of others, including top-level shinobi like Elite Jonin, were probably 3 meters high by now. This is unbelievable, the once clumsy and tailing behind Naruto turned out to have such a powerful alter ego. It's really cool. Kiba's gaze towards Kays was filled with sparkling stars. Is it always this extreme when having two personalities? Ino, looking a bit infatuated, stared at Kays and Sasuke while drooling a bit, as she spoke. One is the not-so-good-looking clumsy tailing behind, and the other is the incredibly handsome genius. The complete contrast between the two, Ah, I'm going to D.I.E. after three months, Naruto, whose diet and nutrition had all caught up, no longer had that pale and feeble look. Plus, with Kay's coming out and the change in his hairstyle and aura, it could be said that his appearance was on par with Minato. It had gotten to the point where Hinata, with every glance, felt like she might explode, and getting too close might melt her. While everyone was tirelessly discussing Kay's, in the low bushes in the distance, the sound in trio, who had received Orochimaru's order to kill Sasuke, looked like they were facing death, peeking at the crowd with eyes barely visible from the bushes. Do we really have to attack Sasuke? The black-haired female sound nin named Kin, couldn't help but turn her head to ask her companions on both sides. Her face carried a fearful ex- and then there was green chakra bursting out, every strike carried a gust of wind, even creating a huge pit in the ground. And the black-haired Sasuke, he was emitting golden red chakra, moving so fast I couldn't even see his actions. And even after taking a hit that shattered the ground, he didn't seem phased at all. Listening to Kin's trembling voice, the other two were equally gloomy and silent. After a while, a black hedgehog had it, hands with holes resembling wind vents, a male sound nin named Sa quietly spoke up. This is a task given to us by Lord Arachimaru. Even if it means death, we have to fulfill his request. We've managed to survive this long and possess such great strength, all thanks to Lord Arachimaru. Sak's face was full of determination, ready to face death. After all, if it wasn't for Arachimaru saving him, he would have been beaten to death when he was stealing food as a child. That's right, Sak. Compared to Kin, who's a cowardly waste, I really do prefer you a bit more. Wrapped in a thorny cloak, with bandages around his head, revealing one eye, Tosu slowly stood up and walked out of the bushes. He bent forward, tilting his head to bring his lone eye close to Kin's, a cold murderous intent emanating. If you want to run, I wouldn't mind killing you right now. If you join us in ambushing and biding our time, there's still a chance to survive, and your family won't be implicated. His ominous words and gaze sent shivers down Kin's spine. She quickly spoke up to explain to the two, Don't look at me like that, Tosu, I'm not going to run. Right, Sak, help me explain, please. HMPH, Sak coldly snorted, about to say something when a voice behind him, devoid of emotion, interrupted, Sound ninja trash, you're in the way. Who is it? The three of them, now aware of the situation, quickly jumped out of the bushes, and turned to the source of the voice. It was Gar, holding a gourd on his back with his arms crossed, accompanied by Kankuro and Tamari. So, it's those three sand ninja. After recognizing the newcomers, the three of them breathed a sigh of relief. They had almost thought their eavesdropping had been discovered by Sasuke Naruto from afar. We don't have time for you now. If you don't want to lose your lives, then get lost. Sak waved his hand as if shooing away approaching dogs. Upon hearing this, the love mark on Gara's forehead began to bulge, but his express- You don't need to waste your energy. Be fearless in battle. So what? Gara looked coldly at the sound ninja trio. Anyone who crosses my path will die. Gara, who knew about the alliance, had initially intended to spare these three sound ninja underlings. But he hadn't expected that they had no idea about his identity, and dared to be disrespectful. For these insignificant and annoying underlings, he'd rather have some peace and quiet, so he might as well dispose of them easily. Since you seek death, I will grant it to you. 
The hot-tempered sack couldn't hold back and took a step forward. Don't attack, I'll shatter them with my voice. While speaking, Sack bent down and dove forward suddenly. In the proximity, he raised his palms, revealing the sound holes on his hands. A series of ear-piercing sounds and air pressure swiftly gushed out from the hollows. Sound slice. Die. Seeing Gar standing still as if in shock, Sack wore a triumphant smile. However, swish boom. What? Sack's smile froze in place. Gar, who remained motionless, was enveloped by a sturdy layer of sand all over his body. His attack had only caused some sand to flutter in the air. How could this be? He effortlessly blocked my sound waves and air pressure attack, and it didn't affect him at all. Refusing to give in, Sack took consecutive steps, changing his direction and continually releasing ear-piercing sound waves and air pressure. But every strike was blocked by the automatically generated sand. Is this your pressure and sound attack? Gar's face, hidden in the eggshell-like sand armor, only revealed a pair of murderous eyes in the darkness. Let me demonstrate to you the attacks born from pressure and the sounds of despair. Sand binding coffin. Sand waterfall funeral. At the moment of Gar's command, he formed a hand seal with one hand, while the other was raised horizontally towards Sack. His palm faced forward, and his five fingers curled into claws. In an instant, a large amount of sand swirled up from all around him. It rapidly condensed in mid-air into multiple sand hands, reaching out towards Sack. Sack quickly tried to step back, but he was surprised to find that there was a substantial amount of fine sand beneath his feet, appearing out of nowhere. This sand transformed into seven or eight hands that firmly grasped Sack's ankles. With his movement hindered, more sand-formed hands covered him. In just the blink of an eye, Sack was completely enveloped in what seemed like a sand coffin, rendering him immobile. Damn, my body is trapped, and I can't move at all. Only Sack's face remained visible, twisted into a grimace. He anxiously shouted at the two people who were still in shock on the other side, Don't just stand there, do something. Tosu and Kin quickly snapped out of it and rushed towards Gar. Stop it. Release Sack quickly. Watching their actions, Kankuro, who was spectating nearby, couldn't help but mock, it's too late. Gar's sand can kill a Lee Chunin in an instant. Unless you're a Jonin, it's better to run away now. As if confirming Kankuro's words, Gar held his hand high in the air with clawed fingers. In the next moment, he clenched it into a fist. Sand waterfall funeral. Asak's scream only lasted for an instant before abruptly stopping. What followed was a torrent of blood, pouring down like rain. Sack, trapped in the sand, had been violently compressed by the countless sand particles, bursting like a fried chicken. Silence. The tranquility lasted for less than three seconds before being shattered. Run. Covered in blood, Tosu and Kin, faces filled with horror, looked at each other, and then quickly turned around, fleeing in the direction of Case. Lead the sand ninja away and provoke those two monsters. We'll take the opportunity to hide and wait for the spoils. HMPH, turning your back on Gara will only lead to a quicker death for you. Tamari, who was on the side, sneered. These three sound ninja, from the moment they showed disrespect earlier, were already as good as dead. Rustling. Accompanying Tamari's words was the sound of swirling sand. Watching the two escape, Gara once again held his hand high, with his fingers forming claws. Sand binding coffin. Just like before, the swirling sand quickly formed multiple sand hands and reached forward. Sand also rose from the ground, entwining around and enveloping Tosu and Kin's ankles. Seeing the two about to be captured, Tosu suddenly kicked Kin. Thud. For the sake of completing the mission, I have to sacrifice you, Kin. Using Kin's body as a stepping stone, Tosu dashed out like a missile. Tosu no Kin's face was filled with disbelief and resentment. Her body was quickly wrapped in sand due to the kick, and then burst into a rain of blood. So decisive, so ruthless. Attacking your own comrade to escape, you really scum. This scene made Kankuro and Tumari, who were watching, couldn't help but express their disgust. For the sake of the mission, abandoning or sacrificing a comrade was understandable to them. But attacking a comrade to save oneself was something they found utterly reprehensible. Shut up and chase them down. The fact that a mere underling was able to escape from his subordinates immediately irritated Gar. After uttering a few words, he was enveloped in a ring of sand and disappeared from his original location. On the other side, those who were healing quickly became alert upon hearing the nearby screams. It seems like a battle is happening nearby. Hanada immediately stood up, activated her by Akugan, and scanned the area. It's over there. 
Hinata quickly spotted the enemy and pointed to the forest on the left. An enemy ninja wearing a sound village headband is being chased. Looking at the approaching figure in the distance, Hinata turned to her team and said, Hey, Shikamaru, we've already obtained a pair of the Heaven and Earth Scrolls. Let's leave this lone enemy to you. We have enough people here, and the pursuers behind us won't dare to continue chasing once they see us. Shikamaru hadn't spoken yet when Ino nodded in agreement. No problem, we'll take this enemy, and we'll take their scroll too. After that, Ino pulled up Shikamaru's collar and t-shirt, as well as Choji's scarf. Then they quickly rushed to the forefront. Troublesome. I hope those pursuers behind us will be sensible. Shikamaru fixed his ruffled collar and, by the way, grabbed Choji, who was trying to step back. Choji, don't even think about running away. We always have to fight. The reluctant Choji, who was being held, muttered softly, since there's only one person, you two should be enough. You don't need me. Don't complain. The enemy is almost here. Interrupting Choji's complaints, the three of them quickly formed their formation. In the front, Tosu, upon seeing Shino's group, wore a surprised expression. He raised the scroll he was carrying and shouted loudly. Save me, and I can give you the scroll. Upon hearing Tosu's request, the three of them were about to nod when a gust of wind and immediately afterward, Gar, who had used his sand body flicker technique, appeared in the middle of them. While forming a hand seal with one hand, he calmly said, Sand Waterfall Funeral. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Above Tosu's head, a sand mist quickly appeared. Then a large amount of sand transformed into a sandstorm and rained down. In an instant, Tosu was buried under the sandstorm, and all the sand pressed inward. Ah, the cries of agony were quickly silenced by the crushing sand. Sand and dust mixed with blood rained down, leaving only an arm holding the scroll exposed. The bloody scene left Kiba's team, who were watching from the front, dumbfounded. Sorry for disturbing you. We're leaving immediately. Without hesitation, the three of them turned around to go back. However, as soon as they turned around, they found that the sand behind them rose quickly and formed a sand wall, blocking their path back. Gara picked up the scroll on the arm he had severed, and he looked sternly at the three of them. That was just a warm-up. Now it's your turn to play with me. I'm not going to go easy on you. Gar. Just as Gar was about to take action, Kankuro and Tamari arrived and stopped his movements. Did you get the scroll? If it's the Heaven Scroll, it's fine, but killing too many people will raise suspicions. We beg you. Are you trying to give me orders? Gara furrowed his brow and looked like he was annoyed. Then he glanced down at the scroll in his hand and tossed it to the two of them. The Earth Scroll. If you dare to interfere with me again, I'll kill you both. Taking the handed over scroll, the two of them looked at Kiba's team with a touch of pity in their eyes. We understand. We'll take care of the pursuers behind us. They won't bother you. You're after the Heaven Scroll. Our team just happens to have it. I'll give it to you right away. Seeing that Gar wasn't letting them go, Ino quickly took out a scroll from her ninja tool pouch. She placed it on the ground, wearing an apologetic smile. We've given you the scroll. Can you let us go now? Gar didn't even glance at the scroll on the ground. His gaze remained fixed on Kiba's team, as if he were looking at three dead people. Go ahead and make your move. Kill me, and you can survive. But we've already given you the scroll, you know tried to explain the situation. However, Gar was already impatient and raised his hand. You know, stop talking and get into the Ino Shikacho formation. Choji, prepare for an attack. Wait for my signal. Realizing that Gar only intended to kill them, Shikamaru quickly shouted. I understand. Although Choji wanted to escape, he mustered the courage to stand at the forefront. Secret Jutsu. Multi-size, technique. As he spoke, he rapidly formed hand seals. At the moment of completing the seals, his body suddenly expanded in all directions, like an inflated balloon. Next is the leaf body flicker technique. Human boulder. Choji retracted his head into his collar and bent his limbs against his body. His entire form transformed into a round and rolling ball, quickly charging toward Gar. Are you trying to mock me with this kind of jutsu? Watching the comically rolling meatball speeding towards him, Gar's forehead vein twitched for the first time. Let me show you what a deadly jutsu is. As he spoke, Gar completed the hand seals again. He raised his hand high and prepared to crush the incoming meatball. Huh. My body Gar's expression changed for the first time, showing a look of astonishment. He looked around with a puzzled expression, casting his gaze on the elongated shadow under his feet. This was Shikamaru's jutsu, the shadow imitation technique. He's too powerful. 
I've stopped him, but I can control his movements at all. You know, it's all up to you now. Sweat started to beat on Shikamaru's forehead. His hands, still forming seals, were trembling as if they would lose control in the next second. Got it. I'll entrust my body to you. Ino had finally completed her seals. She formed a triangular hand seal in front of her chest, aiming it at the immobilized Gar. Secret Jutsu. Mind Transfer Jutsu. A surge of spiritual energy shot out from the triangle. Ino's body immediately collapsed towards Shikamaru, who was lying beside her. Choji, now's the time. Knock him away, then let's retreat quickly. Choji, who had been circling around on the sidelines, heard Shikamaru's call and immediately understood that Gara was already under control. It was now up to him to deliver the final blow. Got it. Watch my meatball charge. The rapidly moving meatball kicked up a cloud of dust. Finally, it crashed into Gar, who remained motionless. Then, a loud crash. The four Gar, who had been completely unprepared, a sand shell suddenly appeared, enveloping his entire body. Sharp sand spikes protruded from the surface, resembling sea urchins. Meanwhile, Choji, who had collided without any precautions, instantly deflated, letting out a scream. Why? At the same time, Ino, held by Shikamaru, let out a muffled groan, and blood started to trickle from her nose and mouth. Ugh, how is this possible? Shikamaru, holding Ino, shouted in disbelief. Choji. Ino. I'm I'm fine. Choji in front had several bloody holes in his body. He struggled to get up and crawled back in retreat. Ino, on the other hand, spat out another mouthful of blood and woke up with a scream. Shikamaru, holding Ino, pointed with terror at the distant gar. Ah. Monster. He's got a monster sealed inside him, what? Shikamaru seemed to have guessed something, and his face turned extremely grim. Could it be related to Naruto? Shikamaru hadn't finished speaking when a shower of sand spikes burst forth from the sky. Swish. Clang. 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 Ah holding the injured Ino, Shikamaru's upper body barely dodged the attack. However, in order to protect Ino, his lower body was pierced through by over a dozen sand spikes. You really have angered me. Gar, whose secret had been exposed to Ino, had a face twisted with anger. A large amount of sand emerged, rolling and surging around him, creating a sandstorm. Now, I will grant you the most painful death. With anger and rage contorting his face, Gar's hand swiftly formed seals in front of his chest. Desert Imperial Funeral. As his palms forcefully came together, countless grains of sand materialized from beneath Gar's feet, rapidly expanding. In the blink of an eye, they formed into a tsunami-like wave of sand. The sky was covered and the sun was blocked. With a terrifying shadow, it descended upon Ino, Shikamaru, and Choji. As he looked at the calamitous sandstorm, Choji suddenly became calm. He took out a transparent box containing three colored pills and held it in his hand. With a smile on his face that was different from usual, he turned around. Shikamaru, thank you for your care and trust. Are you going to when Shikamaru saw the pills in Choji's hand, his expression turned grim. But he was interrupted by Choji before he could finish speaking. That's right, Choji's smile carried reluctance and affection. What a shame, I haven't finished eating all the snacks I've hidden. I really can't bear it. With that, he took out all three pills and brought them to his mouth. Finally, you and Ino, you must survive. Damn it, that kind of ninjutsu, Shikamaru and the others. Seeing the sand that covered the sky in the distance, Keba immediately wanted to rush over. But he was stopped by the sudden appearance of Tamari. You can't go over there. If you don't want to lose your lives. Kankuro also appeared beside them. Even if you go there, it's basically certain death. That level of ninjutsu coming down, there won't be any living beings left in the area. Assholes. Kiba wasn't a fool, so he could only stop and watch helplessly. Behind them, Shino and Hinata quietly circled around them, surrounding Kankuro and Tumari. As long as we tie you up, we can threaten your teammates to stop this jutsu. Shino adjusted his sunglasses and spoke for the first time with an audible voice. Do you think you can use us to threaten Gar? Tumari couldn't help but laugh. Unfortunately, you miscalculated. Not to mention whether it would work, do you think you can defeat us? Tamari swung the massive fan behind her and placed it in front of her. Kankuro also loosened the bandages, revealing his crow puppet. Meanwhile, Sakura suddenly remembered something and quickly ran to where Keis and Sasuke were sitting. Sasuke, Keis, you must go and save Naruto and the others. In response to Sakura's cry, the two of them, with their eyes closed, remained motionless, as if they were asleep. 
Sakura approached and prepared to shake Sasuke, who was on her left. But before her hand could touch Sasuke, he pushed her away. Sasuke, with slightly opened eyes, glanced at Sakura emotionlessly, and then closed his eyes again. Sakura looked to the other side, where Kei's was equally unresponsive. A deep sense of despair washed over her as she sat down on the ground. She turned her head to look at the sand waterfall that was about to collapse. Sitting on the ground in despair, Sakura finally remembered another name. Right, Naruto. There's still Naruto. Naruto, come out. Naruto buzz. As Sakura's shout echoed, a gust of wind pressure swept out. Simultaneously, a golden red light flashed from this side, like a shooting star, heading toward the distant sand waterfall. Following that, Naruto's voice belatedly rang out. Sakura, I heard you cry. It's Naruto. He heard my call. Watching Naruto, who had already rushed into the massive sand waterfall, Sakura breathed a sigh of relief. Although Keiz had no intentions of lending a hand Naruto did. Not to mention now Naruto could use the chakra of the Nine Tails, and he was incredibly strong. Moreover, even if Naruto couldn't handle it, Keiz within him definitely wouldn't ignore Naruto if he was in danger. He would have to come out to rescue himself. With Keiz's strength, Shikamaru and the others were definitely safe. Thinking this, Sakura couldn't help but give herself a pat on the back for her quirk thinking. Within the sand waterfall. Whoosh. As a crimson streak streaked by. Shikamaru, quick on the draw, didn't mind the injuries on his leg. He pounced on Choji and used his hands to pry Choji's mouth open. From his mouth, he forcefully extracted three pills that hadn't been swallowed. Spit them out quickly, Choji, don't even swallow the saliva. Look ahead, is it Naruto or Kei's coming? Although these pills might not necessarily be fatal when ingested. But Choji had taken three of them at once. Shikamaru didn't want Choji to accidentally cause a mishap and sacrifice himself just when they were about to be rescued. Ugh. Hearing Shikamaru's words, Choji quickly spat out a mouthful of saliva. And he even used his fingers to scratch his throat, afraid that a little melted pill might enter his stomach. On the side, Ino was looking ahead with a shocked expression. Looking at the powerful figure that tore apart the sand waterfall with chakra tails, left a deep impression on her. So amazing. Shikamaru and Choji, who had finished dealing with the pills, also saw the impressive scene ahead. Naruto's small body erupted with immense power, battling against the natural disaster that covered the entire sky. At that moment, Naruto was absolutely awesome in their eyes. Thinking back to the small figure who used to be ostracized by everyone, always alone in a corner. And looking at the confident and tall figure now, filled with a sense of security. Shikamaru couldn't help but feel a bit dazed and shouted out. Are you Naruto or Case? Using just one tail's chakra power, Naruto, who had gained some more rationality, turned his head and smirked with a suppressed sense of bloodlust and excitement. I'm Naruto Uzumaki, the little brother of Kazakyo Uzumaki. Hearing the familiar catchphrase and content, Shikamaru smiled happily. Naruto was finally not alone anymore, he had strong power and an even stronger backing. Joji on the side also shouted loudly, Go, Naruto, beat the crap out of this raccoonite brat. Naruto laughed heartily and looked ahead again, his tone filled with confidence and determination. You can trust me to handle this. I will definitely get all of you out safely. As he spoke, the crimson chakra of the nine tails on Naruto's body surged even more. Controlling the chakra tails that resisted the sand waterfall became even more effortless. In the next second. Split for me rip. The overwhelming sand waterfall was finally split apart by the crimson chakra from the middle. And it quickly spread to both sides, turning into a desert several hundred meters in size. Gara looked at Naruto, who had suddenly appeared in front of him. And his unharmed teammates behind him. He covered half of his face with one hand, and the expression on the other half twisted in anger and disbelief. It's you. You actually broke my sand waterfall flow. Gara was full of anger and disbelief. This lackey who he had almost taken out with one blow before the exam had such strength. This disgusting odor. It's that foul fox, Kurama. Inside Gara's consciousness, a sharp and piercing voice resounded. A plump and sandy raccoon, compassed of sand, opened its eyes in the darkness, revealing pitch-black diamond-shaped pupils. One-tailed Shukaku. Phew, phew, phew. Disgusting, it's so disgusting sensing the nine tails chakra, Shukaku emitted a piercing screech. At the same time, it went berserk and vomited within Gara's consciousness. This noisy and piercing noise made Gara feel a splitting headache. 
Damn it, don't disturb me now clutching his head. Gara's expression had become somewhat frenzied. But Shukaku had already followed Gara's gaze and saw Naruto filled with the Nine Tails Chakra. Kukuku. It's really that disgusting and detestable fox. Hey, Brad, give me your body, and I'll help you kill everyone, kill them all, Kukuku. Shut up, Gara shouted with a hoarse voice. Saliva dripped from his mouth due to his distorted expression. On the other side, Naruto thought Gara was shouting at him. He looked ahead angrily, pointing at Gar, and yelled, Raccoon eyes, use any move you've got. I won't let you harm my friends even a bit. Friends Gar suddenly raised his head. Looking at Naruto, who was as monstrous and terrifying as himself when he went berserk. And then looking at Shikamaru and the others, who had a face full of trust behind him. At this moment, Gar couldn't endure it any longer. We're all the same, why should you get their love while I can only feel my own fear me? By killing you, I can feel everything, as long as I kill you, my existence won't disappear raving and roaring. Gara's left eye was covered by sand. In an instant, it took on the appearance of Shikaku's left eye. Kukuku, that's right, Brad. Use more force, use it all, kill this stinking fox Shikaku within Gara's consciousness, also laughed maniacally. It crazily channeled its chakra outward. Gara also roared, covering the ground with both hands. Sabaku Taiso. Desert Funeral, Rumble. In an instant, the entire small desert began to tremble. The sand and gravel on the ground began to flow rapidly, forming a large area of terrifying quicksand. Oh no, it's starting again. Feeling the moment he was sinking into the ground, Naruto jumped in front of Shikamaru and the others. Taking advantage of the fact that the three of them were not yet enveloped by the quicksand, he quickly used his chakra tails to wrap them up and threw them outside. You even have time to save others, let's crush you to powder 200 meters below the ground, completely. Seeing Naruto still rescuing others, Gara's angry hands curved forward into claws, then he clenched them fiercely. In an instant, the quicksand sank even faster. At the same time, a mini sandstorm rolled up around, and all squeezed toward Naruto. Scatter. Naruto, wrapped in the sand, also began to struggle frantically. His nine tails chakra kept sweeping out. But this sand, enhanced by Shukaku's chakra, dissipated and immediately closed up again, just like an embedded ulcer. Watching Naruto being completely wrapped up and unable to escape. Continuously emitting the sound of sand squeezing. The Nine Tails, who was watching this scene, couldn't sit still. He didn't want to be taunted by Shukaku in the future. What a fool, can't even defeat the Jinchuriki of the weakest one-tailed beast. Saying that, the Nine Tails glanced sneakily at Kei's not far away. Then it slowly tapped the ground with its sharp claws. Suddenly, a tiny bit of pure chakra quietly overflowed. If this doesn't work, I won't give this stupid brat any more power in the future. If it weren't for the fear of causing Naruto to go on a rampage that he couldn't control, and then swapping consciousness back with Gar, it would have resulted in Naruto going berserk and killing everyone, all thanks to the chakra infused with hatred that he sent over. Of course, the reason it was so easy for Nine Tails to send Chakra to Naruto, was because Kei's had released one layer of the Four Symbol Seal inside him, leaving only the outer layer of the Four Symbol Seal, to maintain the sealing space and prevent it from escaping. Unfortunately, Nine Tails was not aware that Kei's, who was in the sealing space, didn't have his consciousness outside, and therefore, Naruto couldn't swap him out. The reason Kei's was swapped out earlier was because the body needed a consciousness to control it. When Naruto actively sent his consciousness into this separate space with barriers, Kei's in the subconscious, who had no preventive barriers, was automatically pulled out by the body. But now, Kei's was also inside the ceiling space and couldn't get out. If Naruto were to go berserk now and try to escape into the consciousness space, it would only leave behind a body driven solely by hatred, with no subjective consciousness, until the chakra was exhausted and it stopped moving. Outside, with the tiny bit of pure chakra injected by Nine Tails. Naruto instantly felt that the hatred from Nine Tails chakra had been diluted inexplicably. If before, he could only maintain some level of rationality in his one tail state. Now, he could maintain one and a half tails worth of rationality. Thinking of this, Naruto didn't hesitate for a moment. He immediately pulled out more of Nine Tails chakra from the ceiling space in his abdomen. At the same time, crackling. The sand that had been tightly binding Naruto, forming a huge sphere around him, still constantly squeezing the surrounding gravel into it. Suddenly, countless small cracks shattered, emitting crimson chakra outward. It's useless, this is my home ground now. As he spoke, Gara used even more of Shukaku's chakra. 
His right eyebrow and eye, following the pattern of the left one, also turned into Shikaku's appearance. And more sand rose from the ground. They swarmed toward the rapidly shattering sand outer shell, making the already large sphere even larger. But in the next second. Boom. Swish. The huge spherical shell made of sand was pierced from the inside by a crimson chakra tail. Then the tail instantly revolved around once. In the blink of an eye, it cut the sand sphere wide open. Naruto, revealed from within the sphere, landed on the falling gravel outer shell. He crouched down, legs flexed, and used the gravel outer shell as a foothold in mid-air to create a red shadow, rushing toward Gar. Swish. Watching Naruto approaching rapidly, Gar's pupils contracted sharply, and he held his hands in front of his chest. At that moment, he felt a sense of danger that he had never felt before. Protected by sand, no one can harm me. This sense of danger made him even angrier, and he couldn't help but roar. At the same time, a large amount of sand no longer gathered forward, but stood in front of Gar. Sand shield. This was the love from Gar's mother, and it was absolute protection for him, absolute defense against others. Unfortunately, this absolute defense encountered an attack that reached its limit. Bang. Bang. Naruto, who was rushing forward rapidly, had a fist enveloped in crimson chakra. In an instant, it pierced through the sand shield in front. It shattered Gara's sand armor on the outside of his skin. The heavy punch hit him in the face. Gara was sent flying backward like a ragdoll, leaving a trail of crimson blood in the air. How is this possible? My defense has been broken, and I'm injured. Gara exclaimed. This shocking scene left Tamari and Kankuro, who were observing the battle from a few hundred meters away on a treetop, completely stunned. Initially, they had planned to let Gara vent his frustration before intervening to calm him down, but now it seemed different. The wounded and bleeding Gara would most likely go berserk, perhaps resorting to tailed beast transformation, and even the feigned sleep technique. No, we can't let this affect our plan. Tamari and Kankuro exchanged a glance and then acted quickly. They jumped down from the treetop and rushed towards the artificial desert in front. Meanwhile, Naruto, who had just landed after his attack, was looking at Gara's appearance. Could it be that you're like me? Does your body also seal some kind of monster? Faced with Naruto's questions, Gara acted as if he hadn't heard them. He reached down and picked up the scattered sand, his face filled with confusion and helplessness. Mom, what's happening to you? What's this warm stuff? Touching the blood oozing from his mouth, a loosened tooth fell into Gara's hand. These are teeth, and this is blood. All of these are my own teeth and blood. Ah. As he looked at the teeth covered in blood in his hand, Gara screamed in shock and confusion. A vast amount of sand appeared in an instant, covering half of Gara's body. A gigantic raccoon tail made of sand extended rapidly from his back. Damn waste of a brat, I've given you so much, and you still can't win against that stinking fox's chakra. I'm giving you everything, use it more, kill him quickly. Or let me come out, I'll take over for you, you useless waste. Watching Gar being battered, Shikaku was going berserk in the ceiling, from two tails to eight tails, he could allow every one of them to defeat it, but not the foul-mouthed nine tails. Yes, kill him. I want to kill him. Shikaku's sharp ear-piercing voice suddenly reminded Gar, who was wailing. He looked at Naruto in a crazed manner and then turned into a blur, rushing out. Swish. You still want to fight? Facing Gar's claw, Naruto's chakra tail behind him effortlessly blocked it. He then punched Gar, sending him tumbling backward. It's impossible for you to win against me in your current state. Naruto's newfound strength filled him with confidence and pleasure. Meanwhile, Keizu's notifications were still coming in, indicating the progress of his darkening. I'll kill you, killing you will prove my existence. Seeing himself being sent flying again with ease, Gar's expression became more menacing. More parts of his body were transforming into Shikaku's form, and it was increasingly difficult to recognize him as a human. Gar, stop it. Have you forgotten the plan to rebuild the village? In a critical moment, a frightened Tamari and Kankuro, with fear on their faces, positioned themselves on either side to block Gar's path. Brother and sister are begging you, please stop. Tamari pleaded. You can vent your anger later, even kill us if you want. In that case, I'll kill you. In a fit of rage, Gar's hand unceremoniously thrust forward, targeting the two. As Gar's hand came down on Tamari and Kankuro, the two of them closed their eyes, preparing for the worst. They hoped that Gar's act of drawing blood would bring him back to his senses. Stop it. Aren't you comrades? Naruto, who witnessed this scene, was also taken aback. 
As soon as he realized what was happening, he hurried forward, preparing to intercept Gaara's attack. But Naruto was a step too late. Just as Gaara's claw was about to tear through the two, it suddenly halted and instantly transformed into falling sand. Simultaneously, the appearance of Shukaku on Gaara's face vanished, returning to Gaara's enraged expression. He glared fiercely at the two, then turned and walked away. Don't follow me. If you dare to try and stop me from venting again, I'll definitely kill you. Although Gaara had always claimed to love himself and live for himself, hoping to prevent his existence from disappearing, deep down, he still longed for the care of family or friends. Even if he had said many times that he would kill Tamari, Kankuro, and his father, he ultimately couldn't bring himself to do it. Seeing that Gaara didn't attack, Kankuro was initially incredulous, but then heaved a sigh of relief. Phew I almost thought I was a goner. I can't believe it. Gaara actually stopped at the last moment. Tamari said, patting her chest, still trembling with residual fear. Then, she suddenly remembered something and quickly chased after Gar. Gar, wait for us. You're injured and still bleeding. Let me treat you. In the hidden sand village, Gar had never looked so miserable. Now, injured and bleeding, it was a good opportunity for her to approach him, and maybe improve their terrifying yet pitiful sibling relationship. Upon hearing Tamari's shout, Gar's body twitched slightly. Then, without turning back, he disappeared in an instant using the sand shifting technique. Naruto. He just left without even looking at him. What was the point of this fight anyway? Shaking his head, Naruto retracted the Nine Tails chakra back into his body, and also silently thanked it in his heart. Kurama, thanks a lot for that just now. I know it's probably because of the pressure from Kays, but I still want to thank you. Naruto thought that the recent help from the Nine Tails was due to the pressure from Kays. After all, their relationship had improved significantly not long ago. And now, defying the Nine Tails to stand up for himself would serve as confirmation. Thinking of this, Naruto felt a warm feeling in his heart, and his mood improved. HMPH, foolish brat, you're just too naive. The Nine Tails in the ceiling space muttered in a somewhat speechless tone. Then, it turned to Kays and explained, don't overthink it. I just didn't want to lose to that stupid dracoon cat. Besides, I'm doing this to avoid causing you trouble. Otherwise, he would have gone berserk and killed everyone long ago. Kays glanced at the Nine Tails and didn't respond, shifting his attention to the recently acquired Darkening Points. Corruption Points plus 2000 current Darkening Points. 18,000 Kays decided not to redeem the 18,000 Darkening Points immediately. He planned to save them for Nagato's pair of Rinnegan. He had already sent one of his shadow clones, along with Zabuza, to the Hidden Rain Village. If everything went smoothly after demonstrating their strength, they should be able to join them. At that time, he would also be able to see the corruption points needed for redemption. Next, his plan to break through to AD would require the use of the Rinnegan. He hopes that the required amount of blackening points won't be too high, otherwise, he might have to focus on Nagato to accumulate them. The onlookers who had witnessed the battle came rushing over. Among them, Choji was the most excited. He rushed forward, grabbed Naruto by the shoulder, and said, Naruto, you are so unfair. You secretly left us and became so strong, not to mention how cool you become. Naruto scratched the back of his head and laughed in delight. He was pleased with the attention. On the other hand, Shikamaru, Choji, and Ino wore grim expressions. Shikamaru commented, with this injury, we completely lost our chance in this shunin exam. Those scrolls have been buried under this sand, and even if Sakura helps us heal, by the time we're back on our feet, the other teams will have long cleared the exams. Sasuke also arrived at the scene, watching the outcome of the battle. However, he appeared somewhat disappointed and shook his head. If it were me, with the power of even one tail, I could have easily defeated the enemy. If it were Kays, he wouldn't even need a tail, HIS-1 techniques alone would be enough. You use almost two tails worth of power, and you still couldn't finish the opponent. Naruto didn't catch on immediately and remained puzzled. After a moment, he replied defiantly, Sasuke, stop bragging. My chakra isn't as pure as yours. It's hundreds of times more difficult to control. If I had simple chakra like yours, I would have knocked the opponent down long ago. Simple, my foot. Simple. Sasuke retorted, casting a sideways glance at Naruto. A thin layer of golden red chakra enveloped him. Come on, use your chakra. Even if I use just a strand of the tailed beast's chakra, I could easily defeat you. Let's go, let's fight. Naruto was not going to back down. However, he was wisely pulled aside by Sakura. 
Hinata opened her byakugan, her voice trembling as she changed the topic. Um, I, I found the scrolls with my byakugan. They're buried beneath the sand over there. There are two scrolls. Two scrolls. You know Yamanaka, who had appeared weak earlier, immediately became enthusiastic and excited. Her pale face now had a hint of flush due to the excitement. It must be the scroll left behind by the unfortunate guy who was killed earlier. Those dark circled eyes didn't take it with him. Ino cheered. Kiba and Akamaru also rushed over to help with the digging, eager to see what was inside the scrolls. Sakura joined the group as well, ensuring to use her medical expertise to help Ino recover, and providing assistance in the digging process. She wanted to give her team the best possible chance of succeeding in the exam, despite the challenges they had faced. While everyone was busy with the scrolls, Naruto had forgotten about his heated argument with Sasuke. He wore a silly grin, lost in his own world, and couldn't resist peeking at Sakura, who was working alongside him. Under the extensive use of shadow clones, two scrolls, one for heaven and one for earth, were quickly unearthed. Because Naruto drove off the enemies and saved the almost fatally injured Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji, they naturally didn't hesitate to take this additional earth scroll. They merely reclaimed the heaven scroll Ino had initially taken out. As for Naruto, who acquired the earth scroll, he now had both scrolls required for the second part of the exam. The next step was to reach the center of the forest of death to pass this second exam successfully. After distributing the scrolls, the sky was getting dark. In order to help Shikamaru, Ino, and Choji, who had been injured twice in a row, Naruto and Sakura decided to rest with them for the night. Sasuke didn't object either, he no longer cared about his rank in the Chunin exams, and kept glaring provocatively at Naruto, as if he was ready to challenge him at any moment. As for Kiba, Hinata, and Shino, they had already gathered both Heaven and Earth scrolls, so they bid farewell and left. They didn't want to waste time and decided to head to the central tower of the forest during the night. Not far away, behind a tree trunk, Kabuto, wearing black framed glasses, withdrew his prying gaze. He gently adjusted his glasses on his nose, his brows furrowed with doubt. He actually held his own against Gar in his half-tailed beast form. Naruto has truly mastered the power of the Nine Tails. It seems that the thousand snakes Orochimaru summoned in the afternoon were also involved in his battle. But what's going on with Sasuke? Why can he use the tailed beast chakra too? And the tailed beast chakra emanating from him, as well as the heaven's curse seal, successfully applied to his neck. Could it be that Orochimaru has made significant breakthroughs in his research on the Eight Tails Chakra lately? So he gave both the Eight Tails Chakra and the Heaven's Curse Seal to Sasuke together. Kabuto wasn't entirely convinced by his own speculations. After all, combining these two powers would make Sasuke incredibly formidable. Judging by Sasuke's aura and his disdain for Naruto, even with elite down in level abilities, Kabuto wasn't sure if he could compete. Shaking his head, Kabuto took out a pen and notebook, and recorded all the information he had just observed. When the afternoon exam started, he didn't enter from the same entrance as Naruto's group. Instead, to avoid suspicion, he chose a relatively distant entrance. After entering, he quickly separated from his teammates, and began searching for the traces of Naruto and Sasuke. Later, he was drawn to the appearance of the thousand snakes, rushing to the scene. Unfortunately, the battle had already ended when he arrived, and he only witnessed Sakura tending to her comrades. He didn't witness Sasuke's actions or the remains of Orochimaru's white snake body. However, Kabuto closely observed the battle between Naruto and Gar, as well as the near confrontation between Naruto and Sasuke, from a distance. Who is that? Suddenly, he noticed a protruding figure from the ground and furrowed his brow. He raised his hand and shot a row of shurikens in that direction. Swish. With the shurikens embedding into the ground, the raised earth returned to its normal state, and revealed a plump figure on the other side. Medic Nin Kabuto, it's me, Jirobo. Looking at Jirobo with purple rope tied around him, Kabuto released his furrowed brow and asked. What are you here for? I remember that Lord Arachimaru instructed you all to stay in the base and only come out when the plan begins. Jirobo nodded, of course, I'm aware of that. But now Lord Arachimaru has returned to the base and sent me to inform you. Originally, the plan was supposed to start only after the daimyos arrived for observation, but now he wants you to go out with me. The plan is moving ahead of schedule. Kabuto was somewhat surprised and puzzled, but he quickly realized the reason and asked, is it because of Naruto and Sasuke? I don't know. Jirobo shook his head, showing some impatience. I'm just here to deliver the message. 
If you have any questions, you can ask Lord Rachimer. Kabuto showed no reaction to Jirobo's disrespectful tone. Instead, he smiled and nodded, you're right. Since the plan is advancing, there's no point in me continuing the exam. With that, Kabuto took out the heaven and earth scrolls he had obtained and opened them, revealing the spirit transmission jutsu with the word human inscribed inside. Bang. After a puff of summoning smoke, the voice of the proctor in the scrolls was heard, opening the scrolls mid-exam, you are disqualified. Swoosh. A blue chakra operated surgical blade created a splash of crimson. The proctor had an expression of disbelief, clutching his neck, and collapsed backward. Kabuto, with a faint smile, reabsorbed the chakra from his palm and then crouched down. He patted the proctor's corpse. Dead soul technique. The already cooling corpse's heart suddenly began to beat. Subsequently, like a living person, he stood up and walked to Kabuto's side. This scene sent shivers down Jirobo's spine, but Kabuto seemed unfazed and said, you should go back and report. I'll go out as if I've been eliminated. That night, in front of the main residence of the Shimmer clan. Hey, Blondie, Redeed, and that black-haired guy, is this the place where you said you can kill people? Gazing at the grand closed gates of the luxurious mansion, Haydn had been prohibited from killing for many days, and he was now holding his side of the crescent moon with excitement. But to avoid making any mistakes and incurring punishment, he turned his head to confirm with the three others. Black-haired guy. I am Ichihamadar. The nine tails scowled at Haydn. He then turned back, crossed his arms, and arrogantly declared, Don't ask me. I don't know. I'm just bored and came along to grab a bite. The Nine Tails, who finally had a chance to enjoy human life, had been feasting in the Four Star Village's base all afternoon until evening. If it weren't for seeing Minato, Kushina, and this guy Hayden sneaking out, it would have eaten until the next morning. After all, apart from the Sage of the Six Paths, it hadn't had a chakra link with anyone else before this. Now that it had finally made a chakra connection, it had to satisfy its cravings. Is the Shimura clan really this rich? Minato looked at the vast mansion and was a bit astonished. If it weren't for the sign saying Shimmer, he might have thought this was the Hayuga Uchiha territory. If the Shimmer clan is like this, Saratobi's clan must be even wealthier. Kashina, who was on the side, muttered angrily. And what about protecting Kanoha and the root? I think they are like leeches and leeches sucking the blood out of Kanoha. No, that's an understatement. They even want to swallow the property of heroes. It's absolutely disgusting, like a tumor and a pus-filled sore. You're right, you're right, Kurama on the side nodded in agreement. They should all be killed, not a single one spared. Listening to the calls for violence from both the fox and Haydn, Minato redirected his gaze. We're not here for revenge and killing. It's best not to attract too much attention. With that, he pointed to the area behind the mansion. Not here, the shrine mentioned by Kays should be further back. Not killing. Haydn scratched his head in confusion. Why did you bring me here if you don't want to kill? You're not asking me to go night running with you, are you? Minato sighed in exasperation. From the start, all Haydn seemed to hear was the word kill. Haydn, let me reiterate tonight's objective. Plunder and destroy the two root bases spoken of by your so-called evil deity. I'll be responsible for blood extraction, and you're in charge of using your cursed ritual to kill with one strike. Kashina and Karama will block the exits. We must make it quick and quiet, avoiding any large disturbances. Finally, take all the information and evidence from the base. Understand. Since Minato was currently only a chakra construct, similar to a shadow clone, his physical form was very fragile. He planned to rely on the speed of flying rage and for blood extraction, and avoid direct combat. Besides, Kaze was linked to his chakra, so there was no concern about excessive flying rage and usage. If needed, Kays could replenish his pure nine tails chakra. I understand. Haydn waved his scythe with an excited expression on his face. I promise that those whose blood you take will feel the blessing of the evil deity and experience ultimate pleasure. Minato sighed. It seemed that Haydn only focused on the blood extraction and killing. Haha, you're quite interesting, young man. I like you a lot. Kurama patted Haydn's shoulder in approval, but Haydn shrank away in annoyance. Meanwhile, Kashina wore a gentle smile and said, Minato, you're so caring and gentle. As soon as she mentioned gentle, Kashina's expression changed dramatically, and her hair flew into the air. Do you think I would say that? I'll tell you, if you keep repeating useless nonsense, I'll make sure you can't walk away from it startled by Kashina's outburst. Minato instinctively cringed and quickly moved to the front. 
Follow me, this way. Beneath the Shamar clan's shrine, two root shinobi patrolled in a dark corridor. Suddenly, a strange runa kunai flew towards them from a distance. Hearing the kunai's sound, the two shinobi didn't hesitate and immediately dodged. However, the kunai disappeared in the next moment, revealing Minato, dressed in his ceremonial robe. Ugh. The two root shinobi were about to shout, but found their voices sound like leaky bellows. They felt a slight pain in their throats. A warm, moist sensation flowed down their skin, blood from their slit throats. Eleventh and twelfth, Minato's voice sounded like a death god's whisper. These root shinobi, with mid-level ninja abilities, fell prey to Minato's deadly trap. Even though Minato is not in his physical form right now, he can easily achieve a one-head kill. At the same moment Minato killed the two, deep within the base, a row of kunai flew through the air. Swish, swish, swish. Simultaneously, there was a shocked exclamation. The fourth hookage this can be upon hearing someone loudly call out his name, Minato, after dodging the kunai, sighed in resignation. They found me so quickly, they're really vigilant. Saying that, Minato looked in the direction of the voice. Shimura clan's high-ranking ninja. I have a faint impression of you. We should have crossed paths over a decade ago. It seems there might be some surprises in this space. With those words, several kunai bearing the flying rage and seal were launched in different directions by Minato. Who are you? The high-ranking Shimura ninja was both shocked and furious, roaring, everyone, attack. Anyone who dares to impersonate the fourth hokage shall be executed on this spot. Because of his interrogation jutsu, he didn't demand a live capture, as long as the head of the corpse remained intact, it would suffice. Is it an impersonation? You'll know soon enough. In the time it took to speak, Minato's figure disappeared from where he was. When he reappeared, he had replaced one of the kunai far ahead, and was in front of the Shumer high-ranking ninja. Flying Thunder God no. This is impossible, this iconic ninja technique instantly shocked the Shumer high-ranking ninja. If he had any doubts before, the appearance of the Flying Thunder God had practically confirmed it. The fourth hookage is not dead, everyone, run and spread the news, having narrowly avoided a strike aimed at his neck, but with his arm sliced, the Shimmer high-ranking ninja shouted at the top of his voice. Having experienced three battles, he knew very well the terror of Minato. He was the kind of person whom, if encountered on a mission, you could immediately give up and escape without facing any punishment. Now, this man had come back to life and invaded the root space. He must have learned of the tragic fate of his descendants. So, at any cost, he had to get this news out. Otherwise, the root and even the Shimmer clan would face an unprecedented disaster. You can't escape. Minato, having failed to land a single blow, didn't attack again. Instead, he gently released the kunai covered in blood. But don't worry, it'll be over in an instant, and you won't suffer much. His words sounded gentle but carried a spine-chilling coldness. The Shimmer high-ranking ninja was about to say something when he found Minato had disappeared from where he was. Meanwhile, he kept seeing flashing yellow lights in the distance, as well as fallen ninja. This was the yellow flash that made enemies cower in fear on the battlefield. No, I need to run quickly, while he's busy killing the others. The Shimmer high-ranking ninja didn't stay stunned for too long. A few seconds later, he snapped back to his senses and hastily made his escape. But just as he raised his foot to flee, an intense pain pierced his chest. It felt like a steel needle had punctured his heart. He reached out to touch his chest, and his hand came away wet and warm. Why the Shimmer high-ranking ninja's face held remnants of fear and disbelief as he fell heavily to the ground. Even until death, the root shinobi couldn't understand how he died. Naturally, he didn't know that there was a fanatic of an evil god, hiding, at the entrance of the base. Oh, we've got another one coming. Hiding, covered in blood, had an ecstatic smile on his face as he stood in the midst of a bloody ritual with the blood seal. He picked up the kunai continuously appearing in front of him, and licked the blood from it. His expression became even more manic and demented, looking no different from a psychopath. Come on. This time, it goes straight from the temple to the brain. As his body was covered in black and white stripes, Haydn aimed the massive steel needle at his temple, and thrust it in fiercely. Squish. The steel needle penetrated the brain. The immense pain made Haydn's body tremble. This kind of ecstasy after surpassing extreme pain is better than beheading by a thousand times. Speaking, Haydn began to rapidly spin the massive steel needle in his temple. His insane expression reached its peak at this moment. Sai kunai hai tai duck. It's making me so ecstatic. Kushina. Kurama. 
This scene of Haydn's madness successfully drove Kashina and Karama away from him. No, I must keep Kays from this lunatic. Even the perverted old man Jureya is better than this lunatic. As if imagining Kays or Naruto, making a disgusting expression like Haydn's, Kashina couldn't help but shiver, and Gusabim's covered her body. Karama also smacked its lips and shook its head. I take back what I said about liking him, this masochist is too insane. While they were talking, a ninja with a bleeding neck rushed toward them at high speed. Obviously, this rude ninja had a special constitution. Even with a slashed throat bleeding profusely, he still had the strength to run. HMPH, it's finally my turn to lend a hand. Kurama snorted coldly, and its arm transformed into a massive fox claw. But before it could strike, Kashina, on the side, moved faster. Damn you, you root scum, die, die, die in an instant, eight adamantine ceiling chains shot out, directly nailing the unresponsive root ninja to the wall. A woman may be weak, but for her child, she could be strong. Originally, Kashina, who disliked killing, showed no mercy at this moment. These chains that were originally used for sealing and binding. Now, they all turned into spikes, delivering a fatal blow in one strike. All for the sake of bringing justice to the dark and painful memories. Ugh. On the side, Kurama, which had stretched out its claws, felt a little embarrassed as it hung in the air. Then, it acted as if nothing had happened, reabsorbing its chakra, and continued to watch the battle with its arms crossed. As Haydn, with no more sacrifices, was about to leave the ritual, Minato, emerged from the depths of the passage. How is it? Did you find the information and evidence? Kashina leaned forward, eagerly staring at Minato's empty hands. Minato's face didn't look very good as he shook his head. It seems that everything here has been moved, leaving only some abandoned equipment. It's probably due to some unknown reason that caused Danzo to move everything, leaving behind some guards. Of course, this unknown reason was because two months ago, Saratobi Hirzin revealed the locations of these two bases. This led Danzo to move everything important and leave some ninja guards. This base is now just a temporary stop. But Danzo's approach was correct because, after Saratobi Hirzin revealed this information, he didn't keep it a secret anymore, and even gave it to Kays, hoping to improve their relationship. Unfortunately, Kays, after receiving the information, didn't bother to acknowledge Saratobi Hirzin, and had no intention of continuing to destroy these two bases. Because this would lead Naruto to feel that he was killing innocent people unnecessarily, causing his trust and reliance on Kays to decrease. It was only now that these two bases were being used to test Minato and Kashina, to see if they were truly cutting ties with Kanoha, and would get their hands dirty, rather than secretly protecting the village under the guise of helping with revenge. So the next base when Kashina had a premonition that the root base in the forest of Kanoha, might also be an empty show. It doesn't matter if it's there or not. All we need to do is eliminate everyone and pass Kaze's test. It's like a challenge, only by completing it can we have a chance to gain trust and forgiveness. Otherwise, Kays will never trust us, the parents who sacrifice for Kanoha. Minato is well aware of the significance of this operation, having been a Hokage himself, and he's not so foolish as to misunderstand Kays' intentions. Upon hearing the words trust and forgiveness, Kashina immediately couldn't sit still, and she ran out ahead, shouting as she went, Let's go, let's go, we need to get to the base in the forest of Kanoha. Early morning in the vertical sun. Danzo stood at the base gate below the ancestral shrine with an Ashen face. After a long while, the root shinobi, with a grim expression, walked out of the base. Lord Danzo, it's the same as the base in the forest of Kanoha. They're all dead, not a single one left alive. Danzo, who had been surviving in other bases, suddenly felt a large number of tongue Hashirama disintegration seals disappearing yesterday. So he brought his men back overnight and only arrived now. Did you find anything? Danzo's tone was cold, making the root shinobi shiver a bit. I've checked, and I didn't sense any residual tailed beast chakra. It shouldn't be the doing of the one you're thinking of. If it were them, they wouldn't have left the base behind. The one mentioned by the root shinobi was naturally Kaze, who had destroyed one of the bases. Hm. Danzo glanced at the root shinobi. The dissatisfaction and coldness in his eyes made the root shinobi quickly lower his head and avoid eye contact. After a while, Danzo snorted coldly, propping himself up with a wooden stick, and walked toward the Hokage's office. In the Hokage's office, Saratobi hears and stared at the intelligence in his hand, his brows furrowed tightly. Suddenly, the door was pushed open with a bang. Angrily, Danzo walked in, his face stern. 
But before Danzo could speak, Saratobi hears in through an intelligence scroll and said, Rachimaru and a mysterious man from the land of stars, infiltrated the village yesterday. Only your two bases were destroyed, see the specific intelligence yourself. It's highly likely that you attracted some powerful enemies from the outside for your actions. You should be well aware of what you did outside. If it were indeed case, Saratobi Hirzin wouldn't have been so troubled. After all, Danzo's covert actions had been increasing, and he was becoming less honest. But now, it was unknown men operating in the shadows, which was quite terrifying. Danzo glanced at Saratobi Hirzin coldly without responding. After casually flipping through the intelligence for a few moments, he left with the intelligence and his subordinates. Outside the sound village's residence. Danzo walked slowly to the main gate with his subordinates. However, he didn't push the door open but stopped in his tracks. Behind him, the root members with masks quickly dispersed in the surroundings. Soon, the sounds of battle echoed from nearby. In just a short moment, two masked Anbu directly under the hokage turned into corpses and fell to the ground behind Danzo. Among the dispersed root members, only his two guards returned to Danzo's side. Lord Danzo, all the Anbu tales who followed us have been dealt with. One of the guards respectfully reported in a low voice as he took a step forward. Saratobi Hirzin's telescope technique did not work on him, so Danzo was well aware that Saratobi Hirzin would definitely try to send people to follow him. Unfortunately, he wasn't someone to be trifled with. If anyone followed him, he would kill them. You guys stay outside and don't let anyone disturb me. After giving this order, Danzo once again pushed the door forward. Yes. Following the command, they stood guard on both sides of the door. As soon as Danzo entered, Hirzin appeared around him, aiming his weapon at his vital points. Danzo didn't even blink at this and just looked calmly into the depths of the residence. Then, he spoke in a calm tone. Arachimaru, is this how old acquaintances greet each other? Old acquaintances. Haha, <laughs> Arachimaru's mocking laughter came from inside. You can call it that way. Jirobo, put your weapon away, don't be disrespectful. Kabuto, bring my old acquaintance in. Following Rachimaru's command, Jirobo finally put away his weapon and stood to the side. Kabuto, on the other hand, walked out from the house, smiling in a somewhat insincere manner. Lord Danzo, it's been a long time. I really didn't expect that you would have a connection with the Rachimaru. It seems that the root of Kanoha has long since rotted away. Because of Danzo's design, Kabuto killed the person he respected the most, the head pharmacist Yakushi Nanu, with his own hands. So Kabuto truly hated Danzo. HMPH, after rot comes rebirth, even the roots deep in the earth will eventually sprout and grow into towering trees. As for you, you're just an unfaithful and unfilial pawn. Danzo had nothing but disdain for this pawn who had been saved and protected by Arachimaru, and who considered Arachimaru his savior. It was truly incomprehensible to him. Danzo remembered very clearly. Kabuto had initially left the orphanage because Rachimaru had taken an interest in him. If it weren't for Rachimaru, Kabuto should have grown up happily in the orphanage by now. Yukushi Nanu, the head of the orphanage, who was also the head pharmacist, would not have died in the end. He. Kabuto's eyes were chilling, but he still habitually smiled sarcastically. In that case, I sincerely hope that the rotten roots can sprout, rather than turning to ashes like two months ago. After a sarcastic remark about the base that had been completely destroyed by Kizekyo, Kabuto stepped aside to make way. Come with me, don't keep Lord Arachimaru waiting. Through the corridor, an underground entrance quickly appeared. This was a temporary underground space built by Arachimaru. After all, being in Kanoha, there were some things he couldn't put in plain sight. Upon entering the underground space, Danzo saw Rachimaru tinkering with test tubes and an unknown liquid. Behind Rachimaru were four wooden coffins, each about the height of a person. Danzo's initially calm expression showed some movement. His single eye's pupil tightened for a moment, as if he had realized something. Rachimaru, catching a glimpse of Danzo's expression, smiled faintly and then put down the test tube. Danzo, didn't you say you wanted to avoid suspicion and not make contact until the plan succeeds? What's changed now? Arachimaru asked in a mocking tone. And by coming here so boldly, are you trying to expose my connection with the sound village? Danzo, in response to Arachimaru's questions, withdrew his gaze and spoke with disdain, they are just some discarded pawns, do you suddenly care about them? As for avoiding suspicion, it's no longer necessary. 
since here is in dare to reveal the location of my base, leading to the deaths of my subordinates, it's only right for me to return to Kanoha for some actions. Are you ready to join in? Arachimaru's eyes narrowed, as if he had discovered something interesting. Danzo, on the other hand, coldly sneered and said, Of course, I'm going to join in. But I won't be targeting people loyal to Hiruzen. I'll be going after your discarded pawns and the Sand Village ninjas. I want the Daimyo's to see how incompetent Hiruzen is, and how weak Kanoha is under his rule. Only my iron-fisted leadership can save Kanoha and bring it a future. Arachimaru, hearing Danzo's words, remained unperturbed. After all, they were all discarded pawns working toward their respective goals. He was more interested in Danzo's sudden change of heart. I recall that you previously mentioned wanting to destroy Kanoha and then rebuild your own Kanoha in its ruins. How did it change to helping Kanoha fend off enemies and gain support to become the next Hokage? Arachimaru inquired, his tone filled with sarcasm. Before Danzo could respond, Arachimaru continued, Oh, my apologies, I remember now. You must be short on manpower after losing three of your bases and subordinates, right? Haha. <laughs> Indeed, in just a little over three months, almost half of Danzo's subordinates had died. His sudden change of plans was likely due to this reason. Subordinates can be replaced at any time, as long as I become Hokage, Danzo retorted, unfazed by Rachimaru's mockery. But seeing that you've completed that jutsu, I feel more at ease. What do you know about the Four Star Village? Rachimaru was taken aback by Danzo's sudden question. Do you suspect that your base was slaughtered by people from the Four Star Village? Frowning, Arachimaru recalled the near-death experience he had the day before, and his expression became quite serious. In that case, you should be careful. That entity that can grant others tailed beast powers is very dangerous. Its threat level is no less than that of the Akatsuki. Really that dangerous? Danzo had already obtained information about the Akatsuki from Arachimaru. Knowing that the members were all powerful less rank criminals and rogue ninjas, comparing the four-star village to them was truly shocking. With no more to discuss, Danzo quickly left the underground space. As he was leaving, Arachimaru spoke one last time, By the way, the plan has been moved up, if everything goes as expected, it will happen in a few days. Be prepared. Danzo's body paused briefly upon hearing this, but he didn't ask why. Instead, he continued walking out, saying, Understood, I'll find a way to bring the daimyos to witness the battle ahead of time. Central Tower of the Forest of Death Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura reached the endpoint of the exam smoothly. Coincidentally, they encountered Team Rock Lee, who had already arrived. Oh. It's the one with thick eyebrows. I didn't expect them to arrive so early here. Seeing Rock Lee's distinctive appearance, Naruto exclaimed. Hearing Naruto's exclamation, Team Rock Lee turned to look. It's you Rock Lee was also surprised, then quickly turned and shouted to Niji and Tenten. I told you, it's him, the monster who defeated Kakashi Sensei. I remember Sakura calling him by the name Kaze. Kaze Niji and Tenten immediately looked over. They wanted to see what kind of person could defeat Kakashi. It's him. That guy with the arrogant and cool yellow hair before the first exam. Seeing Naruto, Tenten recalled being stopped by two guys with Jinjutsu before the exam. But why does he look so weird, like he's changed? Naruto's exaggerated movements and lively personality made Tenten unable but Hinata and her team arrived second, surprising Niji. I'm not Kaze, I'm Naruto. Hearing Team Rock Lee calling him Kaze, Naruto loudly refuted. And you with the thick eyebrows, I won't let Sakura be taken by you. Sakura. Before Sakura could speak, Rock Lee instantly appeared in front of Naruto. Staring at Naruto with eyes burning like flames. I'm not called thick eyebrows, I'm Rock Lee. And I will train hard to defeat you, and then start dating Sakura. Sizzle, S-I-Z-Z-L-E, the eye contact between them seemed to spark burning lightning. This left Sakura, who was speechless on this side, with veins popping on her forehead. Then, surpassing her usual speed, she quickly gave Naruto and Rock Lee a punch each. Bang. Bang. You two idiots, stop talking nonsense. Whether I like someone or not is my business, not something you can decide. Originally, Sakura wanted to say she didn't like either of them, and wouldn't date either. But seeing Naruto's side profile, she inexplicably changed what she was about to say. Considering Sasuke's attitude towards her in the previous exams. Maybe, just maybe, she had a slight chance with Sasuke. But if not, she could reluctantly agree to Naruto and then convince him to switch to case. Thinking this, Sakura couldn't help but show a shy and silly smile. Boring. 
watching Sasuke, who was about to leave the scene, just wanted to leave the crowd. Suddenly, his brows furrowed, pushing Naruto away. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Sand bullets formed from several grains, hit the spot where Naruto was standing. Seeing Sasuke push him, Naruto thought Sasuke wanted to fight again. Just as he was about to roll up his sleeves to fight, Sasuke said disdainfully. Idiot, look at where you were standing just now. Where I was standing. Turning his head, Naruto saw several sand bullets on the ground. Suddenly, his face turned black, and he angrily looked behind. He immediately saw Gara and his two companions walking towards him. It's actually you, the guy with dark circles trying to ambush me, darn it, wasn't getting beaten by me yesterday enough, although those sand bullets seemed weak, they couldn't even break the ground. But Naruto was a skilled ninja now. Skilled ninjas needed to save face. Gara, emanating a strong scent of blood from his body, didn't give Naruto a friendly expression. He just gave him a cold look and said indifferently, if it was an ambush, you would already be dead. And, you're in the way, move aside. After being injured by Naruto yesterday, Gara unleashed a massacre in the death forest. At least four squads, twelve people, died by his hands. Hence, the scent of blood on him was quite intense. Hey, you ambush me and still act righteous. I won't move if you can, step over me. Seeing Gara being so unfriendly, Naruto was very angry. Swoosh, swoosh, swoosh. Seeing Naruto not yielding, the word love on Gara's forehead had veins popping up. At the same time, strands of sand slowly circled around Gar. Seeing the tense atmosphere, Tamari, who was behind, intervened in the next second. Just greeting each other, don't be mad. Look at those sand bullets, they crumbled halfway, they're not even aggressive. Kankuro also whispered to Gar, Gar, endure a bit more, it won't be long before you can fully release it. Seemingly because Kankuro and Tamari healed Gara's injuries and even grilled fish for him last night, Gara's expression calmed down, and the sand automatically returned to the gourd on his back. For the upcoming exams, you better hope you or your companions don't encounter me. Otherwise, I will use sand to crush your bones, bit by bit. After saying that, Gara no longer insisted on Naruto making way, directly using sand body flicker to pass by Naruto and head towards the tower. Excuse me, coming through. Knowing the terrifying strength of Naruto, Tamari and Kankuro politely passed through the crowd. They quickly caught up with Gara in front. After Gara and his team left, Sakura on the side breathed a sigh of relief. Then, with a frightened and innocent look on her face, she held her head and shouted in distress. Ah, why does he want to crush my bones when it's Naruto who caused the trouble? Taking advantage of the situation, Naruto approached and patted his chest. Don't worry, Sakura. I'll defeat him if he tries to harm you. Hearing this, Sakura looked frustrated. Your effort won't do any good. On the side, Rock Lee, watching Gara walking away, suddenly turned to Niji. He gives me a very bad feeling. Niji also frowned and nodded, very dangerous, engaging with him might lead to death. Seeing Rock Lee and Niji looking serious, Tenten curiously asked Naruto in front of her. How did you provoke such a terrifying guy? Why does he look like he wants to kill you guys? Naruto proudly lifted his head, his face full of pride. If you're talking about this, I won't be sleepy anymore. In short, I beat him up fiercely to save someone. After Naruto and his team explained Gar's terror to Rock Lee and the others, they entered the central tower. Inside the tower, they opened the heaven and earth scrolls. Iruka, summoned through the seals inscribed on the scrolls, expressed praise and congratulations for their early arrival. He mentioned that if they had opened the scrolls midway, he would have had to make them lose consciousness and eliminate them. The Ruka then began explaining some philosophical concepts, particularly the Chunin insights written by Saratobi Hirzen. Finally, he informed them that although they had cleared the second stage the next day, they would have to wait for three more days. The third stage of the exam would begin after the fifth day elapsed. During these three days, they could stay in the tower but they needed to gather food and water from the forest themselves. After conveying all this information, Iruka led the team to the resting area. In the wind country. Hidden sand village. What? Rasa looked at the scroll handed to him, his face filled with confusion and anger. Were we supposed to wait until the end of the Chunin exams, with all the cages present, to start planning? Why is the plan suddenly advanced? Rasa's participation in Arachimaru's plan to disrupt Konoha was to showcase the strength of the hidden sand village to the cages, gaining more missions and tasks. It was also aimed at restoring the confidence of the wind country Daimyo in them, reversing the village's decline. 
Being situated in the desolate desert, the hidden sand village lacked natural resources and conditions, compared to the other four villages. The previous losses in the three wars resulted in the wind country daimyo losing confidence in them, leading to a forced reduction in military expenses. Many missions were assigned to Kanoha, and various expenses for sand village ninjas were cut. The downward spire left the village impoverished, and the welfare for its ninjas decreased. Numerous ninjas fled, and education for new ninjas suffered due to financial constraints. If not for Rasa's successfully inheriting the third Kazakija's magnet release, enabling him to extract gold dust from the desert to supplement the village's finances, the hidden sand village would have become a minor village like the Rainer Waterfall. Lord Kazakij, the specifics of the plan have all been recorded in the scroll handed to you by Lord Arachimer. As for why the plan is advancing earlier, Lord Arachimer has his considerations. Whether you go or not is up to you. But I must remind you, whether the cages are present or not, if Kanoha is destroyed by the hidden sand, the news will spread throughout the ninja world. Rasa looked deeply at Saken, then closed the scroll. Go back and tell Lord Arachimer that I will consider it. Having said that, he waved his hand towards the side. Someone, escorted the guest. Two hidden sand anbu appeared, blocking the way in front of Ross's desk, gesturing for Saken to leave. Wind Shadow didn't get upset, instead, he left a parting remark before walking out. Time is running out. I hope Lord Kazakij considers the good of the village. As the sun set, while Rasa was still contemplating whether to continue with the plan or not, a hidden sand anbu suddenly appeared, handing over an intelligence scroll to Rasa. After receiving and reading the contents, Rasa's expression became quite vivid. It seems Rachimaru's capabilities are not to be underestimated. He actually found a way to make Kanoha invite the feudal lords and me for an early observation. Since that's the case, I don't need to hesitate any longer. Saying that, Rasa stood up and walked towards the exit. At the same time, he spoke to the Anbu who delivered the intelligence. You go and instruct the Anbu squads to gather, then depart for Kanoha to meet with Maki. Rasa couldn't afford to bring such a large force with him, as it would raise suspicions in Kanoha. He planned to let the main force leave first, while he, accompanied by a few guards, would slowly make his way there. On the other side, Saken, who had been guarding outside the hidden sand village, witnessed the assembled teams at the gate, and the subsequent arrival of Rasa. As the gathered teams quickly set off, Rasa, with a few guards, deliberately delayed his departure. Observing Rasa's direction, Saken reached for a communication scroll, summoning a snake. After placing the intelligence inside the snake, he dismissed the summoning. Simultaneously, in the underground laboratory of the sound village's headquarters, Arachimer, experimenting with test tubes and unknown liquids, was interrupted by a sudden appearance of a summoned snake. Seeing Arachimer, the snake opened its mouth and spat out the intelligence scroll from Lefty. It seems there's news from Saken. Picking up the scroll and scanning its contents, Arachimer's face revealed an excited smile. A windmill that doesn't turn has no value. Fourth Kazakij, Rasa, let him become the initial breeze to set this windmill in motion. In the Hokage's office. Here is Inser Toby, looking at the intelligence in his hands, had a difficult expression. Danzo invited the Kazakij and feudal lords in Kanoha's name for an early observation. What does he want to achieve? Could it be related to Arachimer? Thinking about the lack of any information from the Anbu he had sent to investigate, Saratobi was becoming increasingly wary of Danzo. Coupled with Danzo mentioning the Chunin exams two months ago without a clear reason, he couldn't help but be on guard. Is Danzo colluding with the Rachimer, planning to assassinate the feudal lords during the observation, and incite another war? Saratobi knew very well that Danzo wanted to pull him down and take the position of Hokage for himself. Previously, it was small-scale assassinations and disturbances, but now, it seemed Danzo had suffered heavy losses among her subordinates and bases. He was now resorting to desperate measures. For example, having Arachimaru assassinate the feudal lords, then blaming him for inadequate protection. Subsequently, using the war to force him to rely on him, allowing him to regain control of his root organization and re-establish his influence. Maybe he would even use these reasons to pressure him into abdicating, promoting himself, or recommending someone of his choosing. Similar to when during the Third Great Ninja War, he recommended Arachimaru's Hokage. Although the plan sounded unwise and unreliable, Saratobi felt it was in line with Danzo's style. He tapped the table lightly with his fingers, summoning the Anbu hidden nearby. 
go inform Kahari and Hamur, as well as the high-level ninja who currently have no missions, to gather for a meeting. For the upcoming Chunin exams, I need them to focus on protecting the village. The Anbu nodded respectfully and vanished on the spot. Yes sir. On the other side, Arachimaru had successfully approached Rasa. Arachimaru. Looking at the figure ahead adorned with a purple link trope, Rasa halted. Were you preparing for the Kanoha collapse plan? Why have you entered the territory of my wind country? Are you planning to persuade me personally to advance the plan? Rasa thought that maybe his attitude yesterday was unclear, causing Rachimaru to be anxious, thinking he no longer wanted to be part of the collapse plan. So now, he had come in person to persuade him to continue. It seemed that Rachimaru's hatred for Kanoha was even greater than the rumors suggested. Persuade personally. Rachimaru looked surprised but quickly caught on. With a playful smile on his face, he jumped into a canyon in front of Rasa. Haha, <laughs> that's probably it. Seeing Rachimaru approaching, Rasa didn't suspect anything, accompanied by two bodyguards. They all jumped into the convenient canyon for conversation. No need to persuade me personally, I've felt your sincerity and decided to advance the plan. But I still want to know what happened that made you have to execute the plan early. As Rasa entered the canyon, Rachimaru's smile intensified. Approaching slowly, he repeated Rasa's question. Of course, there were some unavoidable circumstances that led to advancing the plan. As for what circumstances, well, that is just as Rasa was listening attentively, Arachimaru, who had come close enough, suddenly opened his mouth wide. A patterned python emerged, and its mouth spat out a rapidly extending snowy white blade. Kusanagi sword. Swish. Stab. Rasa, who never expected Arachimaru to attack, was instantly pierced in the left collarbone. If his reaction hadn't been quick, dodging it just in time, the strike would have pierced his throat. Kazuki Ijizama. You bastard, what are you doing? Well Rasa was shocked, the Anbu guards on the side reacted faster. They immediately moved forward, intending to force Arachimaru to retreat. But before they could reach Arachimaru, they heard an emotionless voice in their ears. Dead bone pulse, dance of the seedling fern. Swish, swish, swish from the sand beneath, sharp white bone spikes suddenly thrust out in the path the two guards were about to take. In the blink of an eye, a field of bone spikes emerged, turning the two sand village Anbu guards into sieves. Two horrifying screams echoed through the canyon. Ah. X2 a large amount of blood instantly splattered the sandy ground around. However, these blood-stained bone spikes were not done yet. With terrifying speed, they continued to thrust toward Rasa behind them. Rachimaru, you're asking for death. Facing the bone spikes that instantly killed his guards, Rasa, with a face full of anger and disbelief, shouted loudly. Then, a large amount of chakra surged from his body. In an instant, it transformed into countless glittering grains of sand, sweeping in all directions. Faced with this terrifying wave of golden sand, Rachimaru showed no hesitation to linger in battle. He immediately retracted the Kusanagi sword, dodging and leaping away. The bone spikes beneath the sand also stopped instantly, then retracted. Following that, a strange pale-faced young man with large bone spikes and dark purple-black skin, swiftly emerged from the sand. After agilely avoiding the surrounding golden sand, he stood behind Arachimaru, his face pallid. Arachimaru. In a furious roar, Rasa, though puzzled about why allies planning against Kano has suddenly turned against each other, understood that, injured, he shouldn't linger in battle. After using the golden sand to repel the two, he decisively fled. Watching Rasa escape, Arachimaru showed no intention of pursuing. He calmly spoke to the nearby Kamimro, you've worked hard, put away the earth release seal and take a rest. Arachimaru Sama, I can still fight. Kamimro's expression was calm, but his eyes held a touch of devotion and fanaticism. Knowing his own physical condition, he just wanted to do more for Arachimaru while still alive. Haha, <laughs> Kamimro, you won't be able to intervene in the upcoming battle. As Rachimaru spoke, the figures of four individuals Jirobo, Teaya, Kitamaru, and Seikin, appeared on the canyon walls. Subsequently, a rectangular barrier composed of purple transparent flames, enveloped the entire canyon. The four violet flames formation. Seeing Rasa, who was about to run out of the canyon, angrily shouted, realizing that breaking through this barrier with brute force would take too long. He directly attacked the person who set up the formation. Sizzle, sizzle, sizzle. As the golden sand washed over, the sound of roasting echoed continuously. Soon, shining gold ingots fell from the sand, swiftly turning into chakra and disappearing. At least a formation set up by Forge Nin level ninja. 
Ross's face darkened as he quickly charged towards Kunimuro, who was nearest to him. If he couldn't break through the barrier with force, it was quicker to kill the one who arranged it. Fool, do you think we're unprepared? Seeing Ross approaching, Kunimuro taunted without hesitation. Then, extending another pair of arms, he collaborated with the revived Seiken behind him to set up another layer of the Four Violet Flames formation. Another layer of the Four Violet Flames formation seeing this scene, Ross's face turned even darker, but his manipulation of the Golden Sand didn't stop after rushing towards Kamimro. Unfortunately, even after washing over Kamimro, he was still blocked by the barrier. Rasa, exposing your back to the enemy means death, you know. Suddenly, Arachimaru's voice sounded from behind Rasa. Immediately, a flash of white light. Arachimaru gripped the Kusanagi sword, slashing down through the air. Russell. Without turning back, Rasa directly blocked the blade with the swirling golden sand. Arachimaru, why are you attacking me? Do you not want to destroy Kanoha and seek revenge against Kanoha? Seeing that escape was impossible, Rasa could only resort to conversation. After all, Arachimaru, with his formidable reputation and powerful subordinates, was not someone he wanted to confront head-on. Destroy Kanoha. Arachimaru laughed and licked his lips with his tongue. Just you sand village people can't achieve that. So, my only goal has always been one thing. To assassinate the third Hulkage, here is in Saratobi. Assassinate the third Hulkage. Rasa instantly understood. You want to disguise as me to get close to the third Hulkage, and then assassinate him. Arachimaru nodded with a sly smile, very clever, so you're destined to die today. Moreover, I've prepared a big gift for Y.O.U., saying that, Arachimaru suddenly clapped his hands in front of his eyes. Soul Reaper Jutsu, reanimation. Swish. In an instant. A six-foot coffin suddenly rose from the sandy ground, bringing forth billowing dust and smoke. At the same time, a creaking sound echoed from the smoke. The rising coffin automatically opened, and the coffin lid slammed heavily on the sandy ground. Subsequently, as the smoke dispersed, a figure with deep blue hair and wearing the robe of a Kazakiage emerged. This is the third Kazakiage upon seeing the figure inside, Ross's eyes widened in shock. He then glared fiercely at Arachimaru in front, his expression fierce and terrifying. Damn bastard, it's you. The sudden disappearance of the third Kazakiage was because of your assassination. If it was a starting point for the decline of the Hidden Sand Village. It was the disappearance of the third Kazakiage, leaving the village without a leader. Afterwards, countless resources were spent searching, leading to wars, suffering, and chaos in the country. It was from that time onwards that the Daimyo of the Wind Country harbored significant dissatisfaction towards the Hidden Sand Village. This laid the groundwork for future budget cuts, reduced benefits, and decreased missions. Haha, <laughs> it wasn't me who took him out. I just saw someone using it quite effectively, so I secretly took some DNA from the body and made one for myself. Arachimaru explained with a smirk, simultaneously jumping to the front of the coffin. In his hand appeared a kunai wrapped in sealing paper. Inside the coffin, the seemingly lifeless third Kazuki Ajapar suddenly moved. He slowly walked out, looking towards Rasa. Seeing the movement of the third Kazuki Ij, Rasa's surprise and confusion deepened. The corpse is actually moving. No, wait, did you turn him into a puppet? Rasa looked angrily at Arachimaru once again. Turning the third Kazuki Ij into a puppet was a blatant insult to the hidden sand village. Before Arachimaru could speak, the third Kazuki Ij in front spoke. Oh, Rasa. I didn't expect to meet you again, especially in such circumstances. But it seems you've grown up, matured quite a bit. It seems I've been dead for a long time. The words of the third Kazuki Ij momentarily stunned Rasa's enraged expression. Sensei. You still have your consciousness, the third Kazuki Ij glanced at Arachimaru, who was still grinning. Then, taking advantage of not being controlled, he quickly spoke. This is a forbidden technique that temporarily resurrects the dead for battle. Arachimaru used this jutsu to summon me and fight against Sasori. And my disappearance back then was because I was ambushed and killed by Sasori, turned into a puppet. What? You were killed by Sasori. Rasa was completely taken aback by the unexpected truth. But thinking about it, it made sense. To kill the third Kazuki Ij and escape unscathed in the hidden sand village. It could only be Sasori, who knew the village inside out. Moreover, Sasori was Lady Chiyo's grandson. Even if he had defected, it would have been easy for him to approach the third Kazuki Ij. Presumably, when the third Kazuki Ij met Sasori, he also had the intention of persuading him to return. 
But unexpectedly, Sasori would resort to such dishonorable tactics and launch a surprise attack. Yes, I was too careless at that time. Seeing the two about to continue chatting, Arachimaru interrupted the third Kazakij. Alright, the nostalgic time is over. As the price for knowing this information, Rasa, it's time for you to go. Pop. Ripples like waves appeared on the back of the third Kazakij's head. Arachimaru inserted the kunai wrapped in sealing paper. The next moment. Mist rose around the third Kazakij. His body quickly regained a healthy color, just like a living person. You actually perfected this technique. After being infused with the seal, the third Kazakij exclaimed, and the lively expression in his eyes quickly disappeared. In its place was a puppet-like silence. During Rachimaru's previous battle with the third Kazakij and Sasori, the third Kazakij had autonomously freed himself from the reanimation jutsu. Originally, he intended to do the same this time, but Arachimaru directly eliminated his consciousness. Bastard, stop this. Wanting to inquire further, Rasa aimed at Arachimaru and formed hand seals. Magnet release, iron sand drizzle. The gold sand floating around Rasa instantly turned into numerous hard needles, densely covering the air. In the next moment, these needles cut through the air, all whistling and shooting out. Swish. 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 Rachimaru didn't dodge, instead, the third Kazakij flashed forward. With a wave of his hand, he created a large wall of sand iron in front. Magnet release, sand iron wall. Bang. 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 All the gold sand was blocked outside, unable to make any progress. It's useless, Rasa. You gold sand will be stopped by the sand iron. And you still have to face my attacks. Hidden technique. Myriad snake hands. Taking advantage of the gap after the gold sand ended. Countless snakes extended from Arachimaru's arm. In the blink of an eye, they reached Rasa. Rasa's expression condensed, quickly retracting the scattered gold sand, wrapping and squeezing all those snakes. Then, they turned into blood and fragments, falling out of the gold sand. What are you looking at? Suddenly, Arachimaru's voice sounded again from behind. Rasa didn't turn around, and the gold sand around him, as if anticipating, instantly formed a small shield. Clang. The Kusanagi aimed at Rasa's back was once again blocked. At the same time, other gold sand quickly gathered in the sky, forming a massive sharp cone in a moment. It's useless, you have gold sand, but I have sand iron. The sand iron that had been floating around the third Kazakij flew to the top of Arachimaru's head. And before the gold sand cone struck, it formed a sand iron cylinder and collided with it. Boom of island roar echoed. The gold sand cone that hit the sand iron inexplicably disintegrated, revealing ordinary sand inside. It turned out the previous gold sand cone was only a camouflage on the outside. You fell for it, Arachimaru. The cold smile appeared on Rasa's lips. And the third Kazakij you resurrected, the amount of iron sand formed by magnet release is too little. With a wave of his hand, the gold sand hidden in the sand below Rasa emerged. It covered the sand under the feet of the third Kazakij. Magnet release, sand gold grand burial. As the words fell, quicksand mixed with gold sand instantly engulfed and sealed the third Kazakij. Because Rasa still wanted to ask questions and didn't know if the reanimation jutsu would revive, he accidentally sealed the third Kazakij, causing the iron sand to dissipate instantly. At the same time, with the remaining gold sand, Rasa once again formed a shield behind him. Blocking the Kusanagi sword stab by Rachimaru. HMPH, what else do you have now? Turning his head, Rasa, with a smile on his face, was suddenly interrupted by a severe pain in his chest. Looking down, he saw a figure covered in wounds emerging from the sand under his feet, with half of the body exposed. And that hand, filled with blue chakra, was firmly planted in his chest. Yurasa was full of disbelief, never expecting someone to be hidden beneath his feet. But before he could ask, there was a stabbing sound. Arachimaru's kusanagi followed, piercing through his back. And it prevented him from uttering his final words. Withdrawing the kusanagi from his chest, Arachimaru looked somewhat surprised at Kabuto, his face showing a hint of scrutiny. I thought you were scared and ran away, Kabuto. Upon hearing Arachimaru's words, Kabuto nonchalantly emerged from the sand. His face was pale, panting slightly, and his palm was shining with the green chakra of the healing palm jutsu. I am loyal to you, why would I run away? I just learned from you and became a patient hunter. As he spoke, under the influence of the green chakra, his injuries quickly healed. In just a moment, the injuries that were grazed by the gold sand underground were restored to their original state. 
Orochimaru, with an inexplicable expression, stared at Kabuto's eyes. He suddenly smiled only after Kabuto's hair stood on end, then turned and walked towards the Folengar. Kabuto, I really like you. Oh, congratulations, your medical ninjutsu has improved again. Bring them all over for disguise, get ready to set off. Kabuto breathed a sigh of relief, waving towards the distant figures. At the same time, a smile unconsciously appeared on his face. In Orochimaru's gaze just now, there was clearly a lot more appreciation and trust. It seemed that his risky assistance had finally paid off. As the four sound village members cancelled the four crimson flames formation, Kamimuro also lifted the earth grudge fear seal. Orochimaru, using the image transmission jutsu, took on Rasa's appearance. Then, the four of them disguised themselves as the Kazakija's guards, and headed to Kanoha together. Kamimuro, suffering from the bloodstained disease, was ordered to return to the sound village to continue using the life-sustaining device. Finally, Kabuto returned to Kanoha in advance to prepare for the upcoming plan. At night, Arachimaru, disguised as Rasa, finally arrived at the small town outside Kanoha. And Machi, who had been waiting here for a long time, immediately greeted him. Or Kazakiyuch, you have finally arrived. Saying this, Machi stepped aside, pointing to the side road. Please follow me. Kanoha has already arranged our accommodation for tonight. As the Kazakiyuch of the Hidden Sand Village, he naturally couldn't enter Kanoha without any show. The same went for the daimyos who had received the notice, all of them were arranged to stay in the nearby small town for the night. On the next morning, they would participate in the welcoming ceremony and enter Kanoha together. Hm. Nodding slightly, Arachimaru led the guards to the arranged accommodation. However, as soon as they entered the lodging, Machi couldn't wait to close the door. At the same time, he signaled the guards behind Orochimaru to go outside for guard duty. Then, with a puzzled expression, he asked. Lord Kazakiyuch, why did the plan suddenly start ahead of schedule? Were we supposed to wait until the Chunin exams were over? Orochimaru had long expected that Machi would ask and began with the prepared explanation. It doesn't matter when we start, the main thing is to wait until the audience is assembled, and the stage is set. Now that the daimyos have arrived, starting the plan ahead of schedule catches Kanoha off guard. Machi nodded at these words, thinking that it made sense. However, something seemed a bit off about the last statement. Normally, in the first few days after their arrival, shouldn't Kanoha be the most vigilant? Isn't it better to wait until after the exams when Kanoha is more relaxed to strike? Seemingly sensing Machi's doubt, Arachimaru's expression turned stern, and he continued with a cold tone. The sound ninjas also plan to start tomorrow. You go down and arrange the people. As soon as you get the signal tomorrow, act immediately. I understand, Lord Kazakich. Since the plan had been set, Machi didn't want to say more. After all, he had seen the efforts of their Kazakich, and Arachimaru wouldn't harm them. Just as Machi was about to leave, Arachimaru suddenly remembered something. He handed a scroll to Machi and continued, Don't forget to inform the Jinchuriki of Shukaku. Let him find an opportunity to take action against Kanoha's Jinchuriki tomorrow. This is information about Kanoha's Jinchuriki. Let him go all out and try to delay their movements. Jinchuriki of Shukaku. Machi frowned, staring at Rasa, Arachimaru. After a moment, he quickly threw a punch and fused with Wind Chakra. Lord Kazakiyuch, excuse me, I need to verify. Bang. Arachimaru tightly gripped the fist and then looked at him with cold eyes. Are you doubting me? I dare not. Seeing that it wasn't a transformation jutsu and there was no abnormal chakra fluctuation, Machi immediately bowed and kneeled. I'm just too nervous because you don't usually address him as Shukaku's Jinchuriki I apologize. Arachimaru, realizing the mistake in the address, showed no panic. Instead, he reprimanded with impatience. Always stay vigilant, don't casually reveal names or information. Do I need to teach you this again? I'm terribly sorry. Machi lowered his head again, thinking that he might have been overly sensitive due to the plan advancing. Enough. Let this be a one-time thing. Go and take care of your duties. Arachimaru didn't intend to punish him further and directly dismissed Machi to avoid more slip-ups. With his head still lowered, Machi quickly disappeared from the spot. The next day, which was the fourth day of the exams, with the arrival of the daimyos and their allies' caravan, Arachimaru, disguised as Rasa, led his entourage into Kanoha. Both sides of the road were lined with welcome arrangements, curious villagers, and Anbu maintaining order. Soon, they reached a massive arena, where the daimyos and their allies walked out of their carriages. 
They spotted Sir Toby Hearsen at the entrance of the arena. Kano has hookage. Not bad, he actually came out to greet us. The arrival of Hearsen surprised the daimyos. The daimyo of the fire country felt flattered, hiding behind his fan with a cheerful smile. On the other hand, the daimyo of the wind country glanced behind and made a somewhat sarcastic remark. Indeed, not bad. Unlike those ninja from my country, all so arrogant. Even after meeting, they don't even greet properly, hmm. Seeing the conversation shifting towards the disguised Rachimer, Hirazin quickly approached, trying to defuse the situation. Esteemed daimyos, we have prepared viewing seats for you. You can watch the preliminary matches on screens that will start soon. Please, go up first. Hirazin gestured towards a few chunin who respectfully led the daimyos up. Arachimer, still disguised as Rasa, followed with his entourage. Approaching Arachimer, Hirazin smiled and said, Welcome Kazuki H. How was your rest after the journey? Any better? Arachimer, with a narrowed smile, replied, Not bad. After all, I'm still young. But if it were someone of your age, it might be too much to handle. Hearing this, Hirazin laughed heartily, Ha ha ha, not necessarily. I think I'm still quite young. Planning to work for another five years. With a nod, Arachimeru followed Hirazin. Lord Kazakiyaj, please forgive the distant reception. How was your rest after the journey last night? Arachimeru, squinting his eyes, also smiled, it was good. After all, I'm still young. But if it were someone of your age, it might be too much to handle. Hearing this, Hirazin laughed heartily, ha ha ha, not necessarily. I think I'm still quite young. Planning to work for another five years. Saying this, Hirazin led the way, and Arachimeru followed closely. We won't watch the matches on screens with the daimyos. Let's go to the venue together. The venue. That's a good idea. Arachimeru followed. As they walked, Arachimeru's body almost stuck to Hirazin's back. Feeling Arachimeru's back pressed against him, Hirazin stopped with a furrowed brow. Kazuki H, are you following before Hirazin could finish his sentence, a kunai pressed against his neck. Take action. With the command, the four disguised sound ninja swiftly threw smoke bombs, obscuring the entire pathway. Bang. A plethora of smoke filled the surroundings, blocking the view of the entire corridor. Seeing this, the Anbu, who had been lurking in the shadows, emerged. Hokage-sama. In the smoke, they couldn't find any figures. However, the lead Anbu, codenamed Su, keenly noticed a trace. There below. Team 1, come with me. Team 2, protect the daimyos inside and evacuate the villagers. In the arena below, Arachimaru had already taken Hirazin to the center. The disguised sound ninja occupied the four corners, setting up formations. As the sound and sand ninjas near the arena reacted, they quickly jumped out, hindering the Anbu and patrolling Chunin, attempting to approach the center. Simultaneously, Kabuto employed a large-scale Jinjutsu to eliminate less skilled ninja. Honestly, Arachimaru's sudden attack caught Hirazin off guard. After all, what schemer would just jump straight into action upon their first meeting? That's the kind of behavior expected from a brute. Currently, with Kakashi, Gai, and other Jonin leading teams, at least half of the village's elite ninja and Jonin were present. Meanwhile, in the Death Forest, they were ensuring the safety of the tower where the preliminary matches were scheduled for the next day. For Hirazin, he hadn't anticipated Sand attacking so impulsively. Which schemer immediately launches an attack upon meeting? Sound and Sand Ninjas. Didn't expect you to violate the treaty eventually. Are you planning to go to war with Kanoha together with the Sound? Arachimaru chuckled and didn't immediately reveal his identity, waiting for the activation of the Four Purple Wall Formation. The wind moves the windmill, and the wheels of history are about to start rolling. Now, this boring arms race should also come to an end. Provoking a war has no benefits for you and me. Hirazin still wanted to try and salvage the situation. After all, with his current age, another large-scale war might be too much for him. Kazuki H, what are your demands? We can sit down and talk, resolving this in a peaceful manner. Before the persuasion could be completed, Hirazin witnessed the rising purple flames of the Four Purple Wall Formation. This is the Four Purple Wall Formation. You were just stalling for time. Arachimaru dropped the act, his voice returning to its hoarse and sharp tone. Haha, <laughs> have you become so dull? Is it old age senility? Arachimaru taunted, Lord Hokage. This familiar voice, accompanied by the title with an extra hint of mockery, caused Hirazin's pupils to contract. He turned his gaze toward Arachimaru with a complex expression. You're Arachimaru. 
Hearing here's in shocked voice, Arachimaru couldn't help but burst into laughter. Ha 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 ha. Dear teacher, your arrogance and foolishness will soon cost you your life. But well, I guess it's fitting that I'm the one to send you off fulfilling my duty as your disciple, right? Send me off. Hiruzen remained undisturbed, exuding confidence. My rebellious disciple, have you forgotten my teachings? Nothing is decided until the very end. At Arachimaru's words, he slowly removed the human face mask, licking the kunai in his hand with his long, slender tongue, wearing a mocking smile. Haha. <laughs> Look at the time, I believe Gara should be making his move by now. Do you think your confidence can solve the Jinchuriki's transformation before you meet your demise? Jinchuriki transformation. Hiruzen's expression changed abruptly, his face turning serious. I see, that's how it is. No wonder you plotted to assassinate the Kazakiage, disguised yourself as him, and rushed the attack. It seems that during our encounter in the Forest of Death, you had already gathered information about Naruto mastering the two-tailed form. While speaking, Arachimaru maintained his gleeful demeanor, oblivious to the underlying meaning in Hiruzen's words. This is something you taught me, after all information is the most critical part of a ninja's strength. So, hurry up and decide who the fifth Hokage will be, otherwise, you won't have the chance to leave any last words. Seeing that Arachimaru didn't deny Naruto's mastery of the two-tailed form, Hiruzen's spirit lifted, and he regained his composure. Not bad, you still remember my teachings. Unfortunately, you haven't executed them well enough. During their conversation, outside, the ongoing battle alerted his guard. Damn it, how can the third Kazakiage be Rachimaru? All sand ninjas, stop. Upon his shout, the sand ninjas ceased their actions and gathered around him. The pressure on the leaf ninja also reduced, allowing half of them to encircle the remaining sound ninjas, while the others rushed to the forefront of the four purple wall formation. Stop. It's a barrier. The Anbu captain with codename TM, quickly halted the ninja preparing to rush in. Inside, as Hiruzen saw his trusted Anbu arrive, he sighed in relief. He then commanded, go to the forest of death and bring Kays here. If they could just buy a bit more time Kays. Upon hearing the name, Arachimaru's heart sank. It seems my intelligence wasn't thorough enough. Your confidence isn't Naruto, huh? He sneered, revealing his true colors, and continued, I thought you'd come here to negotiate the fifth hookage position. It turns out you're in such a rush because of this. Meanwhile, at the entrance of the Saratobi clan compound. Exactly as Kay said, it's begun over there. This cleverness of yours truly belongs to me. Watching Arachimaru's attack on Konoha, Kashina couldn't help but praise Kay's. Minato, on the other hand, remained silent, pretending not to have heard anything. As for Kurama, the Nine Tails, he stood in the middle of the street, chest puffed out, acting like he owned the world. As the chaos unfolded, hiding, with an excited smile, boldly walked into the compound. Does anyone here want to experience the ultimate pleasure of an evil god? On the outskirts of Kanoha village. Observing the ninja fighting a giant snake in the distance. A figure in an auspicious cloud-patterned robe, carrying a bandaged large sword on his back, and sporting a shark-like face. Kiss him. With a mouth full of sharp teeth, he grinned and spoke to his companion. Itachi-san, looks like our timing isn't the best, things seem quite troublesome here. Itachi, also dressed in the auspicious cloud robe, gazed into the distance with a complex expression. After a while, he pressed down the brim of his hat and calmly remarked. Our mission is to gather intelligence on the Nine Tails. With chaos erupting, it conveniently provides us with an opportunity to infiltrate. At this stage, the Akatsuki organization had started dispatching members to collect information on various tailed beasts, laying the groundwork for their upcoming capturing plans. Itachi and Kissam's original task was to investigate other tailed beasts. However, ever since Itachi intercepted the Roots' coded message regarding Sasuke, he took on the mission to investigate the Nine Tails, and came to Konoha. After all, Sasuke was his only concern and the sole motivation driving him to live. That's true. Although Kissam's face bore a smile, his small eyes lacked amusement. He couldn't shake off the feeling that Itachi had used a Jinjutsu on him not long ago. Also, Itachi's sudden change of mission, following Kissam sensing the Jinjutsu, raised suspicions. Kissam had to figure out what was really going on. While the two conversed, a squad of Kanoha ninjas, reinforcing from within the village, noticed them. Who are you? Are you also with those invaders? Before they could finish their words, their lifeless bodies dropped to the ground, pierced by several kunai. Their eyes stared blankly ahead. 
Witnessing this, Kissam, with his small eyes, contracted pupils. Didn't expect you to act so decisively. Quite a change from before. Is it due to hatred against your birthplace? Itachi, retracting his Sharingan after throwing the kunai, paid no attention to Kissam's words and simply said. No more unnecessary talk, let's go. On another note. Inside the ceiling space. The nine tails, lying on the ground with lifeless eyes, suddenly perked up. Grinning widely, it turned to look at the adjacent case. Hey, the shadow clones linked to my chakra have started moving. Kanoha seems to be in chaos, just as you mentioned. Looks like your little friend Naruto is in for some trouble again. The nine tails face expressed sheer delight, seemingly finding joy in Naruto's misfortune. Has it finally begun? Sitting cross-legged on the ground, Keiz opened his eyes and gazed at Naruto outside. Although he planned to save Saratobi this time, it served the purpose to make his life more miserable. That old man will wish for death. For instance, discovering that the Saratobi clan's base had been raided, losing a significant portion of their assets and intel. And regarding the Hidden Star Village, he was prepared to formally challenge Konoha. With two Yang Nine Tails as backup batteries, Kanoha in its current state would be easily overwhelmed. Moreover, he didn't bother cleaning up the corpses left behind. He specifically left them for Saratobi and Danzo to find later. After the incident, they would extract information from the brains of the deceased. Surely, their expressions would be priceless and their heart filled with shock and terror, seeing Minato, Madara and Kashina, right? Outside. In the Death Forest, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura were on guard, facing Gar and others blocking their way. You passed the exam. Why are you stopping us? And who are those people next to you? As Naruto asked, an explosion occurred at the central tower in the distance. Soon, the noisy sounds of battle erupted from all directions. Be careful. If the exam goes wrong, this place might be attacked by enemies, just like when Orochimaru attacked. Combining the obstruction by Gar and others ahead and the sand ninja who didn't seem like exam participants, Sasuke immediately grasped the current situation. As if confirming Sasuke's words, Gar, blocking their way, raised his hand with a fierce intent and jealousy. Naruto Uzumaki, you're a monster just like me. I can finally, finally kill you with my own hands and have a reason to live again. Sand gushed out rapidly from the gourd, creating a massive sand screen in moments. Simultaneously, cracks started appearing on Gara's face. The sand carried Shukaku's chakra, swelling out. Gara is about to start. Move away quickly, and don't let others disturb him. Seeing Gara directly using Shukaku's power, Tamari and Kankuro immediately let the sand ninja behind them to retreat. At the same time, they summoned the poppy crow and iron fan, attacking Sasuke and Sakura. This isn't our battlefield. Go to another place. Ignoring the warning, Sasuke remained motionless, and terrifying crimson chakra surged from his body. Two enormous tails appeared, and ripples of air waves spread from him. The massive winds lifted the surrounding trees, making them rustle. The iron fan and poppy crow that approached were sent flying backward before reaching Sasuke. This is impossible. Another Jinchuriki those who hadn't seen Sasuke take action, like Tamari and others, were instantly stunned. Sakura breathed a sigh of relief, moving closer to Sasuke. But in the next moment, Sasuke's expression suddenly changed, becoming fierce and terrifying. Following the malicious perception's guidance, he turned his head. In the distance, two figures stood on treetops, wearing straw hats. Itachi the familiar face made Sasuke lose all rationality in an instant. Stepping on the ground, he rushed towards Itachi and kissed him in the distance like a missile. Sasuke seeing Sasuke suddenly change like this, Naruto and Sakura were bewildered. Naruto was about to chase after him when the blood-scented sand from Gar arrived. In midair, it transformed into terrifying giant hands, squeezing towards them. Sakura, I'll stop him. Knowing how powerful Gar's sand was, Naruto immediately erupted with Crimson Nine Tails Chakra. Swinging his tail, he swept away all the sand. Sakura nodded and quickly followed the departing Sasuke. Onlookers like Tamari and others wanted to follow, but the fox tails behind Naruto gently swept, blocking their way. Your opponent is now me. Facing the ground on all fours, clad in a fox-like cloak with a massive fox tail swing behind, emitting a violent aura, stood Naruto. Shikamaru, Kankuro, and others felt as if they were witnessing a replica of Gar. Instantly, no one dared to approach, retreating from the battlefield. Meanwhile, behind them, Gara's upper right half had completely transformed into the appearance of Shukaku. 
The gigantic sand raccoon tail, equally enormous as the chakra fox tail, emerged behind him. This was the form Gaara used in the interrupted battle from last time. You were interrupted last time, but you won't be so lucky this time. Die, you monster just like me. With a roar, Gaara's right claw thrust forward, propelling him like a breaking arrow towards Naruto. In response, Naruto showed no fear. The muscles in his legs tensed, crushing the ground beneath him, and he shot forward like a crimson streak. Dark circles, I'm not a monster, and neither are you swish. Tear. Having used the Nine Tails Chakra many times, Naruto became increasingly proficient in wielding this power. It was just one exchange. Gaara's right half, transformed into Shukaku's body, was instantly cut open, revealing the bleeding arm inside. His body crashed heavily into a nearby tree, breaking the trunk in half. Meanwhile, Naruto landed unscathed. Arag the blood and wounds on Gaara's right arm made him emit a harsh and desperate scream. His gaze towards Naruto became more savage and insane. You actually, once again, hurt me. Unforgivable more, I want more, give me more in a frenzy, Gaara's Shukaku encased body was covered again with thicker layers of sand. Gaara's consciousness, merged with Shukaku, became excited and manic. All my power is yours, kill them, kill the Jinchuriki of the filthy fox, kill everyone, ha ha ha. Accompanied by Shukaku's full power chakra output. In the blink of an eye, Gaara's left half swelled, extending into a massive claw. His entire face lost its human appearance in an instant. A large amount of saliva flowed down sharp teeth, resembling a humanoid beast. Gaara is almost completely turning into that monster. Quick, let's move farther away. Seeing this horrifying transformation, Shikamaru, Kankuro, and others moved even farther away. Even Naruto was astonished by Gaara, now completely resembling a monster. Especially Gaara's gaze. It was a gaze filled with hatred towards everything, but carried an endless sense of loneliness. Just like when he was a child. Continuous sand bullet storm. In his fully transformed half-tailed beast state, Gaara swept a massive sand tail. Instantly, numerous circular sand bullets, accompanied by a whistling sound, shot towards Naruto. At the same time, his body powered up again, turning into a blur and rushing towards Naruto. Clang. 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 Boom. The sand bullets were still blocked by Naruto's crimson-tailed beast cloak. However, when Gaara's sand encased transformed body collided with Naruto, it didn't tear apart this time. With Shukaku's full power output, the sand covered Naruto again, reassembling his form. The fox tail behind Naruto was entwined by Gaara's raccoon tail. Every time it was cut open, more sand enveloped it, making it even larger. Hahaha, <laughs> this time, can you still stop it? Gaara's face showed excitement and madness. Now, even his legs were beginning to transform into tailed beast form, and his body continued to swell. The voice inexplicably carried echoes, as if two vocal lines were sounding. Don't hide anymore, Naruto Uzumaki. Let me see your true appearance, a monster like me that people despise. As he spoke, Gaara's sand transformed giant claw tightly gripped Naruto's hands. On his rapidly expanding body, sand bullets and spikes continuously shot out, striking Naruto. No, neither of us is a monster. We share the same experiences, I understand you. We can't let hatred blind us. Looking at Gaara's appearance before him, Naruto seemed to see another version of himself. No, he saw Case. The alter ego Case, who bore everything for him, took care of him like a brother. Understand me. Gaara's expression became more ferocious. The one trusted by others dares to say he understands me, both monsters, why can you escape fear, why can you be loved, why can you live under the sunlight with a pure heart. You should hate everything, then be hated and despised by everything, just like me. Saying this, Gaara suddenly burst into laughter. His diamond-shaped pupils turned towards the right side of the forest. Hahaha, <laughs> soon, I'll make you reveal your true form, let your friends see your real appearance. At the moment of his words, three sand claws suddenly emerged from Gaara's right side. With a swift motion, they reached for Hinata and the others hiding in the right side forest. Wow ah ah. Run. Oh no, caught. The three approached figures. Just a glance, and Gaara discovered them, pressing them against the tree trunks with the sand claws. Kiba, Hinata, the bug guy. Bastard, let them go, what are you coming at them for? Seeing the three captured, Naruto struggled frantically. His nine tails chakra erupted, scattering the sand that confined him. But now Gaara was fully transformed into a tailed beast. He was like a miniature Shukaku. Not just a single tail, and something Naruto, with two weaker tails, couldn't contend with. Let them go. 
Dar, laughing manically, as if he found something more interesting than staying alive. He looked at Naruto fiercely. As long as you remove the disguise hiding your monstrous nature, I let them go. Otherwise, I'll kill them now. As he spoke, the three separated sand claws squeezed towards Hinata and the others, causing cries and moans. No, don't listen to him, Naruto-kun. Yes, don't listen to him, Naruto, run and get help from Kakashi-sensei and the others compared to Gar. The three had witnessed Naruto going berserk. That terrifying brutality could really kill everyone. Stop, don't force me. Seeing the three in pain, bleeding from their mouths, Naruto's light red vertical pupils turned blood red in an instant. His face also showed a hint of pleading. I don't want him to come out and kill you. Please stop, I can be your friend. Compared to the uncontrollable two tails, Naruto would choose to let Kaze come out. After all, when Kaze came out, he would only kill enemies, but he while using two tails, might end up killing everyone present. Kill me. Friend. Hahaha <laughs> laughing furiously, Gar exerted more force with the three sand claws. Even bone cracking sounds could be heard. You have no choice. Otherwise, they will die seeing this scene, Naruto closed his eyes, his expression carrying a mix of pity and sadness. Although I really want to be friends with you, I can't bear to see my friends die. So sorry, I can only let someone terrifying, unlike me, come out. At this point, Naruto paused, then shouted firmly. Case. Help in the sealed space. Case had furrowed his brows into a character resembling the Chinese character for River, as he watched Naruto playing outside. Did this idiot think of me as a summoning beast? It seemed that after the trust and reliance values were high, he genuinely didn't care about saving face. Kaze found himself somewhat missing the previous Naruto, who had been stubborn, distrusted him, and wouldn't let him go outside. Although the current Naruto greatly trusted and relied on him, he also irritated him. The nine tails beside him also tried to hold back laughter, turning to look at Kaze with a dark expression. Hey, Kaze, aren't you going out? Your dear little brother is summoning Y.O.U. Upon hearing the teasing from the Nine Tails, Kaze's icy gaze glanced over. Just one look froze the Nine Tails' smiling face. It immediately turned into indignant anger. That's right. You're right. That brat outside really did act like an idiot. After speaking, the fox face quickly changed, replacing the gloomy expression with a wicked smile. How about it, do you need my help? I could forcibly intervene and infuse power to make that brat lose control and go berserk. I guarantee that even if the weak little brother of my own is released, it would still be defeated. No need. Kaze withdrew his gaze and looked back outside. Outside. In a quiet waiting moment. Gar, who had caught Naruto, was also intimidated by Naruto's momentum just now. With a face full of vigilance, he stared fixedly at Naruto as if facing a formidable enemy. And Naruto, who was waiting with closed eyes, realized that Kaze was completely ignoring him. Inwardly, he anxiously shouted Kaze's name. As a minute passed. Seeing Naruto still unchanged, Gar's expression gradually became ugly. Coupled with Shukaku's constant taunts and mockery in his mind. His entire face twisted with anger. Bastard, how dare you deceive me, since you won't let the monster inside you come out, let me help you. Angry Gar enlarged his body once again, like a small mountain. Carrying Shukaku's chakra infused sand, he created a terrifying wave. In an instant, it transformed into a colossal claw, slamming heavily towards Naruto. Bang. Roar. The faint red-tailed beast cloak couldn't withstand this terrifying force. Naruto instantly coughed up blood, completely pinned down and unable to move. And you. Gar turned his head towards Sakura and the others. Your deaths are all because Naruto refused to use that power. Swish. As the words fell, Gara once again formed a towering claw with sand, tearing towards the three of them. Stop Naruto, eyes wide with fury, no longer cared if Case was angry. He directly retreated his consciousness into the sealed space. In the sealed space, Case, not having an external consciousness, remained calm and looked at the suddenly appearing Naruto. Naruto also noticed something was wrong, incredulously looking at Case. Case, why didn't you go out? What about outside? Turning his attention outside, Naruto saw his external self lying unconscious on the ground. Thinking of Hinata, Kiba, and the imminent attack, he anxiously shouted. Hurry. There's no time. Case, quickly go out and save Hinata and Kiba. Case waved his hand in response, no hurry, the flow of time inside is slightly slower than the outside, there's still time. Now let's talk about the conditions for me to intervene. Conditions. Naruto was initially puzzled. 
Then, tapping his own head, he revealed an expression that conveyed, I understand what you mean. No problem. After rescuing everyone, I'll let you use my body until the exams are over. Naruto thought that Kei's, not coming out these days, must be feeling a bit pent up. In the future, just tell me directly when you want to come out, as long as it's not during Raymond time. Kei's. What does he mean by using his body until the exams are over? Isn't he asking him to take the exams for him? He really has no shame. Feeling a headache coming on, Kei spoke with a stern face, don't play around. I have only one condition for intervening. After I go out, you can't disturb my actions or seize control of the body impulsively. No problem. Naruto nodded repeatedly like a bobbing chick. Then, he remembered something and added, but you're not allowed to randomly kill people like before, except for enemies. I promise. Kaze had already guessed that Naruto would make this request. He didn't hesitate and nodded in agreement. After all, the boundaries of enemies were quite blurry for him. Those who attacked him were enemies, and those who treated him with malice or hostility were also enemies. Outside. Just as Gaia's claw was about to tear into the three of them, a twisted smile appeared on his face. But the next moment, his smile froze on his face. A sharp pain surged from his right hand, and a familiar voice sounded from behind. Although you've already transformed into a tailed beast, the strength of this body is really nothing to boast about. It turned out that Naruto, who had been pressed to the ground, had somehow appeared behind Gar. In Naruto's hand was a massive sand claw, broken off cleanly, enveloping Gar's right hand. You. Gar, belatedly realizing what was happening, was cut off by the intense pain in his right shoulder, just as he uttered a word. Crack. Blood gushed out from the cut, and the severed part spouted large amounts of blood, causing Gar incredible pain. Ah, that's my arm screaming in pain, disbelief and shock appeared on Gar's face. Naruto, or rather, Kaze, pulled the corners of his mouth, revealing an extremely bloodthirsty smile. Not Naruto, it's Kaze. Still in pain, Gar's sand that was binding the three of them collapsed. Looking at this Naruto, whose temperament had completely changed, even Kiba instantly recalled the case that appeared a few days ago. Great. Naruto called him out, we're saved. Hinata and Shino breathed a sigh of relief, excitement showing on their pale faces, as if they had survived a disaster. So fast. In an instant, he directly tore off Gar's arm. The change in strength is simply on two different levels from what he showed just now. On the other side, spectators like Kankiru and others also witnessed Gar's arm being severed in an instant, with no time for him to resist. Their faces were filled with disbelief and deep fear. But soon, Tamari reacted, swiftly flying away. Avoid it. Under these injuries, Gar will definitely go berserk. The complete form of Shukaku, the one-tailed raccoon, will soon come out and destroy everything. As if confirming Tamari's words, the massive amount of smoke shrouding the sky suddenly appeared. The terrifying tailed beast chakra swept across the entire battlefield, creating a horrifying wind pressure. Then, a sharp and piercing laughter echoed throughout the entire space. Ha ha ha. He's passed out, I'm finally free. And that concludes this episode. If you enjoyed it, I'd seriously love it if you guys could leave a like on the video as it genuinely helps out so much, and it keeps me going, plus it takes only one second. That said, have a wonderful day. See you in the next one.